Hello, I am and I'm here with my sweetheart, Capybara. My pronouns are he, him, they, them. What are your pronouns? Whatever I feel like at the time. <laughs> he, 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 him's fine. He, him's fine. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, it's the follow-up question would be, what do you feel like it is right now? would be the follow-up it's, question. Yeah. But it's funny that you, it's, said, it's, that, you it's, said that to the gender fluid, who usually that was my answer. <laughs> so it's just like, touche, except I don't think that's actually the case for you. Technically, my capybara here, you're my capybara now, um, is is more on the cishet spectrum. They're, they're more like heteroflexible or even possibly pansexual, but they're, they lean towards the straight identity. So, so I thought it'd be interesting as someone who's an outsider kind of looking in and seeing kind of what their reaction is. And even better, it's a male. So that kind of, you know, adds on another level because people would usually suspect a cishet male to not be so, you know. Ooh, but, but I, I feel like he's probably going to rant and rave and ramble more than I am. <laughs> So we're going to start with, I, I did I did go on Twitter and ask, and only one person responded, but I'm still thankful for that one person. I don't think I've actually watched this one yet, but I know plenty about this this guy in the description below. I believe that all homosexuals are paid up. Oh, this is a great start. This guy is a pastor, um, and let's just say he's not very good at his religion since he's all about hate and stuff. Oh, uh, the religion of hate, huh? When you arrive in South Africa, if these people who, well, if these 60,000 people who signed the petition protest against you and what you're doing here, what are you going to do? Well, first of all, it's not true that 60,000 South Africans signed a petition. That's just an online petition that was on pervert websites all over the world. So I don't believe that those people were all South Africans. I think probably the minority of those people were South Africans. Sadly, probably most of the people that signed it were from the United States because the United States seems to be taking the lead role in promoting homosexuality all over the world. Makes me kind of embarrassed How dare you guys. to be an American, but that's really the truth. Hotels and restaurants are saying that they're not going to allow you in. Have you sorted out your accommodation yet? Oh yeah, of course. You know, we have hotel rooms. We we can go to whatever restaurant we want. It's just that when we when we listed meeting locations for the actual event itself, those were the locations that were canceled. So, you know, obviously we can just walk into a hotel when we get there and just book into a room. It's not like anybody's going to know who I am. But, uh, you know, as far as like having a banquet room where we could have a big preaching service, three different hotels have already canceled our banquet room. So we've, we've booked a fourth location, but we're not publicly disclosing that location because I know that as soon as I disclose it, it's probably going to be canceled within 24 hours because that seems Pause to be the pattern quick. over there. Mm hmm. Okay, so he's like, I don't believe South Africa is the one that's actually kind of kicked me out of their country, blah, blah, blah. And yet, South Africa is like, we're going to cancel every fucking hotel on you. I, I, I would have thought that maybe, you know, you get some self-reflection after the first three times it gets cancelled. No, but, no, apparently yeah. tenth time's the charm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's more of a case of, you know, the smell's kind of following me. Um, kind of thing, but they don't notice it. So it's like, yeah, oh, I'm not the yeah, problem. Yeah. Everyone else is the problem because they don't want me to, you know, preach my stuff around here. Don't want me preaching my hate. That seems to be the pattern over there. Do you Her understand expression? why people are reacting this way towards you? Oh, of course I understand that there are wicked, godless, you know, people in this world who <laughs> hate the Lord Jesus Christ and hate the Bible. So of course they're gonna hate. An ambassador of Jesus, yeah, Christ, Jesus Christ, the problem. Jesus Christ because... Pope Francis has said that Christians should apologize to to gays. What do you think of that? Well, I think Pope Francis should apologize to Christians <laughs> for being such a compromising, you know, false prophet. He's I mean, called the Pope to sit a there false and say prophet. that we should uh, to, uh, to apologize to gays. Also bad. First of all, I don't use the word gay because uh -huh. gay means happy, and they're not happy; they're perverted. So if Pope Francis were a real man of God, he would actually preach what the Bible said, you know, in Leviticus chapter 20 and Romans chapter 1 and 2 Peter chapter 2. 
But, you know, Pope Francis is, is not a man of God. He's a false prophet, you know, and Catholicism <laughs> is a false religion. So are you saying Pope Francis' interpretation of the Bible is wrong? I don't even remember Pope Francis even attempting to interpret oh, the Bible. He just says whatever okay. he believes. I mean, he speaks out of Sounds his own wicked familiar. heart. familiar. So, I, you know, I don't remember Pope Francis ever interpreting Romans 1 or, or any other scripture. Yeah, those that interpretations was, that was are always particular issue. anyway. He doesn't preach the also, Bible. He's part of a pagan, hocus-pocus, superstitious, Yeah, you pick and choose what you want to believe. It really isn't based on the Bible. I know people who are Christian you believe the whole who, who thing. don't hate the well, Bible, the thing. But, you don't just pick but they what don't you have want. a problem with gay people. Well, then they aren't a Christian because they obviously don't believe in the God of the Bible. There are many people who claim to be a Christian and they believe in this figment of their imagination, this God that's sort of like <laughs> Santa Claus that allows every manner of sin and filth and perversion. But there is no real Christian who accepts homosexuality. But wouldn't you say God accepts everyone? Isn't that Just Absolutely not. God everyone. created a place called hell where people burn for all eternity. And he said that anyone who does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. The Bible says he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, no, in order to be saved, people have to put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, they're going to go to hell when they die. So, God doesn't just accept everyone. No, you, you have to come to him and, and, you know, put your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But if people reject the truth of God's word and they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, they're, they're absolutely not going to be accepted. Can't the Bible be interpreted uh -huh. in different ways? Uh -huh. That's, you know, that's just something uh -huh. that people bring up when they want to try to shy you want to away shy from, away from all really of the bad says. things. There are certain Apart things the in the Bible that, that are cryptic, you know, parables and, and different things that are symbolic. Hi, and sure, those things can be interpreted in different ways. But there are many things in the Bible you that are crystal what? clear socks. and there's only Mixed one spirits. way to interpret them. I mean, when God oh. says that if a man lies with a man that he shall be put to death i mean that's pretty clear it's it's pretty obvious and there are many scriptures like that all throughout the bible one verse and that's why bible. no one serious said that. theologian of the bible has ever come up with this crazy notion that the bible somehow is okay with homosexuality it's only radical and of sodomite activists that would even come up with such a bizarre notion what if one of your kids came to you and Why said would that any they were of his gay? kids say well, that they were gay? First of all, gay? that's never going to happen because you, you make it seem like it's just a random occurrence. <sighs> oh you know, that, oh, oh, whoops, I'm gay. Like people are just born that way. Which oh, is don't total lie. The reason Learn that behavior, people are homosexual okay. is because the Bible says they've been given over to right. a reprobate mind and that they're haters of God in Romans chapter one. Well, I'm not raising my children to be God hating individuals, so they're not going to grow up and be a homosexual. But, but to me, you might as well ask me, well, what if your child grew up to be a pedophile? What if your child became a child rapist or a serial killer? Well, you know, obviously, anyone whose child grew up to be such a monstrous person would be horrified and disgusted by them. But I don't believe that that will ever happen because the Bible says that if we train up a child in the way he should go, when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So you think that gay people are the same as serial killers and pedophiles? Well, they're not necessarily the same as serial killers, but they are absolutely the same as pedophiles. <laughs> I believe that all homosexuals are pedophiles. If you actually study the history of homosexuality, you know, even back into ancient <laughs> Greece and the ancient Roman Empire, pedophilia has always been part and parcel of the homosexual agenda. <laughs> and all over the, the world, agenda. the homosexual agenda's goal the consensus, is lowering okay. the age of consent. The the I mean, in places like realize, the Netherlands, they have it I down to like 12 I, no. years old. And they're constantly I didn't get the trying memo to push either. for that in the United States and everywhere else to lower it to 16, 14, 12, because these homosexuals are pedophiles by nature. This is part and parcel of their, their so-called lifestyle. I didn't even have sex until I was older. <laughs> I think having sex no under the age of 18 is a little young. I feel like that's, like, too much pressure on someone. Uh, not pressure, but, like, that's too much emotional uh, baggage that a youth is not ready for. Um, I know the age difference is different. Like, 16 is the cutoff for you guys. 18 is the cutoff for us. But even then, I still think anything under 18... I mean, as if someone over the that age kind of thing. I still think, though, that... I personally believe that... Having sex under the age of 18 is kind of a lot of emotional stress and stuff that a youth's not ready for. So I'm just kind of like, I don't know. Is this you setting up your agenda, though? Yes, yes, my agenda. <laughs>
This is my my transgender. The transgender. Ah! I, I legit have a Discord group called the Transgender, and we were just trying to help my best friend with giving him like actual citable sources, scientific and academic uh, sources on things about being trans and transitioning and all that jazz to show his mom. And she purposely wanted to avoid anything that had to do with religion, which is really funny because she accidentally did that, where she showed him sources that were pardon endorsed by churches or this or that that were made from churches and it's like mom you can't use these <laughs> but no so there's so much wrong with that with what he said we've had studies that kind of show that homosexuality tends to not at all be learned you definitely wouldn't expect religion to be a buffer against that anyway. <laughs> um, I, I've seen another guy. I haven't seen someone re him react to this specific video, but uh, not the one I just sent, but the one that we just watched. But um, he was saying he's he's not actually religious. He's just a guy hiding behind religion to hate queer people. He's just using religion as his scapegoat kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, some kind of like validatory material, and he's only which picking is and choosing what he wants to hear, and then like, you were yeah, just exactly. calling it out too, where he was where he was picking and choosing. But also, here's the thing: if he's a Christian, if he's a follower of Christ, Jesus literally said, "Yeet the first fucking Bible." Okay, and I didn't literally say that, but he was saying, "Yeah, he literally said the word yeet." Be yeah. Read the first. The first testament is <laughs> not is not what I want you guys following. Pretty much. In fact, anyone, I feel like, oh, shoot, Shh. <laughs> the video started already. Oh, no. Um, my, my, my girlfriend was actually saying something along the lines of uh, the whole, this, this whole kind of stuff quoting and... the first testament, yeah. ask them if they're Jews, Jewish, because the first testament is literally from the Jewish Bible. I mean, there's all kinds of, like, the badness in there anyway, where I, I'm, I'm sure there's a thing about how they didn't want women teaching people things. They didn't want, um... I don't think yeah, exactly. care in that one. If, if it was a woman, it's, not, it's not like he's going to listen to the other ones anyway. It's just the ones that... the, the, the Fabrics, Shellfish. Um, oh gosh, I have a list on things that are There's like... so many. But people pick and choose. People pick and choose. But the point is, the projection's coming in there too. Because he's talking about how gay people have an agenda. Whereas he's using his own agenda mm -hmm. to persecute the gay people. It's just a simple projection it's a, of his own insecurities, which, you know, I'm not exactly sure what they would be, but it makes him feel good to go after people, then let's just come up with any excuse we can to go after them. Any kind of validation necessary. That's a really bad mindset to have, you know? <clears throat> Shrimp, or shellfish, actually, in general. Pork, obesity, torn clothes, like ripped jeans, <laughs> wearing clothing made from two different fabrics, cutting your hair, shaving, tattoos, and working on Sundays. And I'm pretty sure his hair hasn't, you know, isn't naturally that short. Cutting your hair in general, in any way? Yeah, they used to all wear their hair long back then. Oh my god. There's a storm gathering. The clouds are dark. And the winds are strong. And I am afraid. Some who advocate for same-sex marriage have taken the issue far beyond same-sex couples. They want to bring the issue into my life. My freedom will be taken away. I'm a California doctor who must choose between my faith and my job. I'm part of a New Jersey church group punished by the government because we can't support same-sex marriage. I'm a Massachusetts parent, helplessly watching public schools teach my son that gay marriage is okay. But some who advocate for same-sex marriage have not been content with same-sex couples living as they wish. Those advocates want to change the way I live. I will have no choice. The storm is coming. But we have hope. A rainbow coalition of people of every creed and color are coming together in love oh, to protect so marriage. it's so emotional. Visit nationformarriage.org. Join us. Paid for by National Organization for Marriage, which is responsible for the content of this ad. Oh, really? Those poor people. Oh. It really makes you feel compassionate to support someone's intolerance. Oh. Yes. 
Mm. Also, do, do, do I need a sex? A lot of people like to be like, oh, religion, Bible made, the marriage, right? No, actually, pagans technically did, specifically beginning with hand fasting. But, you know, what do I know? <laughs> I, I I just I'm just confused as to how far someone can take something. Just just like how how, how you can be so backwards and still move forwards. I don't understand how you can rationalize that and feel personally attacked like these people do. Like well, like I'm I'm just gonna go back a bit. They're basically complaining that they're not allowed to be bigoted towards people. They're not allowed to be exclusionary. Like I'm being forced to bake. A wedding cake for a gay couple. How dare like, we they're have, paying you? They're paying I, you. I don't know if that happened over over your your side of the woods, but we did have a case over here of that happening too. And uh, it, it was it, the same kind of circumstance again. It was like, no, you can't do that. You can't, you know, discriminate against people because um, for, for no good reason. As you say, they're paying. They're paying the money. You give them the service. Uh, I, yeah, I just went back halfway through this video, and there's uh, this woman talking about how public schools are teaching their son that gay marriage is is not is okay, and, and it's like it's not even they're not even putting forward any kind of like perceived consequence there. It's just like no, this is bad because it's bad. There's no you know affliction. There's no direct. Um, negativity that would come from that. It's just, it's just, it's just because it exists. It exists to harm them in their own minds. Well, like there was this story where I guess you're saying something similar, where a baker uh, refused service to LGBT couple, claiming it was, you know, violation of their right to freedom of speech and religion and stuff like that, and. They not only did this, they made the, the gay couple's life a living hell. They pretty much had to, like, I don't know exactly what's on top of my head, but it's like something about, like, they almost got ran out of town and stuff like that, the gay couple. Oh. But the bakers are all like, oh, you know, we're being forced against our religion and da 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 da, da. And just like. <laughs> and then this person, um, I haven't watched this video yet all the way through, but I saw some back I, well, I have actually not watched any of it um but this person she's all playing the pity party and you know like i'm being forced to make art for, you know blah 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 and <laughs> it sounds like this um she actually made she had she had gotten fined for you know refusal but she made way more money in donations of people in support of her bigotry kind of thing so we're gonna say <laughs> No, I just looked up this case that I was talking about. It's called Lee versus Ashes Baking Company LTD and others. Uh, so this is a case back in 2018 um, here in the UK. No, no. Yeah, in the UK. Um, it was actually taking place in Northern Ireland. Oh, gosh. Northern Ireland. So so they don't have a same-sex marriage bill. I don't know if that's the case now, but um, the whole crux... Was it Southern Ireland? Yeah, I mean... Northern Ireland's meant to be more tolerant because yeah, Southern Ireland's a lot more like heavily Catholicized um, section of the country. But this one, um, they sent for basically all they did, they asked for a cake that had support gay marriage on it, and this is where the problem came about because um, the Christian owners of the bakery said that they could not make a cake that supported something that found they found offensive to their religious beliefs, and um, th this is such like. This case was, like, ridiculously contentious in the fact that it got all the way to the Supreme Court before they had a decision. So that's, like, the furthest you can take it. And I don't know how long it even went on for. It must have been at least a year or so. Um, but, yeah, they... they, they, they um, what was it? Lee, Lee, Lee won the case, eventually. Um, which is good. And... Um, because the, the point is... The point is not the fact that the single company has a right to pick and choose who their customers are. The law applies to everyone in an ideal circumstance. And on its own, yes, okay, you're going to refuse service to someone because of your bigotry. And I can understand why some people might find that sympathetic, but you don't understand the fact that if you allow that to happen, 
other people are going to take on the same kind of high horse, and, and it's just going to increase the intolerance in general, because they're going to think that's okay. If I find something wrong with this person because of something they can't control, then I'm going to go up against them, and it's validated because no one's going to do anything about it. You have to have things like this to basically stand out and then make sure that people understand that it is not okay in any way to be intolerant to people. No, yeah. It's a uniform thing. It's the rule of law. It applies to everyone. And no one has the right to be bigoted. I think the worst part is when they say, I won't serve gay people. That's just not true. I've never discriminated against anyone in my life. <sighs> Waiting for it. It was a Friday, March 1st, 2013. One of my favorite customers, Rob Ingersoll, walked into the store. Rob's more than a customer, he's a friend. He's been coming in to me for over nine years for birthdays, anniversaries, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day. His arrangements were my favorite to design. They were really fun and challenging. We'd bounce different ideas around and he'd let me be creative and produce something that was unique and special for him. Floral design is an art and Rob gets that. I knew Rob would be coming in. He'd been there the week before when I was out and told the staff that he and his longtime partner, Kurt, were getting married. I knew Rob would want me to create floral designs for their wedding. I love Rob, but I knew I couldn't do this. I'm a devout Christian. My relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing pause, in my pause, life. Pause. Mm -hmm. I remembered the point I was going to make earlier okay, about sure. Catholics and religion. Mm -hmm. I know that technically religion doesn't have to do with bigotry because it's how that person interprets their religion. Mm -hmm. I, like I, I mentioned probably at the beginning of the video, I grew up Catholic. I grew up in a Catholic community. Granted, I grew up in a very LGBT-friendly area, so a lot of the Catholics I knew were LGBT-friendly. And it was really funny to me, because I kept being told, oh, Catholics are the biggest, Catholics are the ones that discriminate, Catholics, Catholics are bad, Catholics are mean, Catholics are this, and Christians are, you know, the loving, forgiving type, blah, blah, blah. And I want to say, I know this isn't the case for all. I know this isn't the case for all, so I don't want any really pissy Christians coming at me and be like, well, I'm LGBT, my brother is gay, and I support him, or something like that. I get it's not, a, but this is just my own personal experience. In my Catholic church that my family went to, one of our priests, and this is before it was legal in my state to, for gay marriage, when one of our priests would go fly off to states where it's legal and marry gay couples. He would go out of his way to marry gay couples because it meant something to him. And when I was in grade school at a Catholic school, and I want to say, I was a very devout Catholic. I really was. I really believed in my faith, and I was very, like, big on it. I was old enough. When I got baptized, I was actually a child, not a baby. Unlike all my sisters. I don't know what happened there. There's a glitch in the matrix with me. Like, all my sisters got baptized as babies, and I did not. I got baptized as a child. But I was really cute about it, because they ask you the question, you know, the I do question. Like, you know, are you, Jesus, what you want? You want to give yourself to God, blah, blah, blah. And you say, I do. I was a cute fucking kid. I went, I really do. You know, I was just really cute about it. Everyone was like, <laughs> but no. So when I came, it's like eighth grade, eighth, seventh grade, I came to realize that I could identify with sexuality. I could date and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I was a bit young to date, but I realized, hey, I'm going to an age where romance and sexuality and stuff's going to come to play. And the default straight. So my mind went, I date girls too. So I'm bi. Um, and this is what's really funny. What invoked this thought was making a Facebook profile. Because they ask you, what's your sexuality? You don't have to put your sexuality, but they ask. And that's what invoked that thought in my child brain. And then come high school, I was like, oh, I'm lesbian. <laughs> and then come college, I'm like... I was right the first time, um, <laughs> but I'm also not a girl, so, <laughs> but no, so. Is it getting confusing yet? <laughs> but yeah, so, um, I put that on my profile for the world to see that I was bi, or pansexual is actually what I came to realize a, lot, uh, a little bit later over the summer that year, um, and one of my classmates came up to me and she's like, Hey, did you know that it says that you're bi on your pr Facebook profile? I'm like, yeah. 
I'm just like, okay, cool. You're bye. Cool. Walks away. No big deal. I didn't get bullied. I didn't get harassed. I didn't have teachers pull me to the side to talk to me about my sexuality or anything like that. I didn't have any whiplash. No one cared. They were all accepting of me being bi or anyone who noticed or anyone who saw. Maybe there's some talking behind my back. I don't know. I doubt it because I'm pretty sure it was a small class. Like these are only one K, one K group, one first, one second, one third. So I'm pretty sure I would have known because I was being bullied for other unrelated things. And funny enough, by a child with autism who was the one bullying me. And then we made up down the road like when I was in high school. And he was like, he apologized for everything. He's like, I don't know why I bullied you, but I'm sorry. But yeah. So really, religion doesn't have to do with bigotry. It's how a bigot wants to interpret mm-hmm. the religion to fit their ideals. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I mentioned, so when I went to high school, when I finally got exposure to Christians or Protestants and stuff like that, and like I mentioned, did not have any trouble with Catholics. And and I even pretty sure I had Catholics who were pro abortions and stuff like that, too. And then I meet Mm -hmm. Christians and they're like, oh, well, I'm supposed to hate you. I'm supposed to tell you going <laughs> to hell. I, sh- I kid you not. People my age telling me that because they were Christian. One of my best friends was saying stuff like that to me because he was Christian. And then he started questioning his own sexuality. Um, and good for him. He actually got to experiment come college because he wasn't under the watchful, constricting eye of his parents. And he confirmed he's straight. Good for him. But he got to experiment. Um, but yeah, so... Basically, my my thing is, it's 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 a lot of the parish too, where it's not technically not all Catholics practice their faith the same. The old Christians practice their faith the same. We had a parish with a very open minded priest. I'm not sure about my school. My school and my my church were different because we didn't get accepted to that school. <laughs> we didn't get to accepted to the school that our church was at, but we got accepted to the other one. Um, so I'm not 100 sure about the, ch- the the priest at the church that I went to the school at, but my family's church did indeed support LGBT or at least gay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I just that's just my own little thing about religion and homosexuality or or LGBT, where I like to state because I have nothing against people of faith. I really don't. I love my family. They're Catholics, agnostic Catholic. Mm, but being religious does not equal anti-LGBT and LGBT does not equal anti-religious and that's just this common misconception people have like you're queer so you must hate religion or you're religious (laughs) so you must hate the queers yeah the battle lines have already been drawn or something like that yeah it's not the case (laughs) it's like an obligation (laughs) sorry I know I was like he's gonna tirade more than I am and then I what happened immediately there? goes on tirade yeah i want a tirade but i want i want to make that point especially as a queer person i don't want people assuming that that of me no i mean of course because i mean like it's, it's it's again you can't you can't you can't generalize like that because that's just as bad you can't say that all religious people are bad because they're not you know they're not, they're really there's not. there's obviously really negative people who are involved with that like, that doesn't mean that they're good at exhibiting their faith or the ideal part of their faith heck one of my favorite least. artists on um twitter they are non-binary pansexual Muslim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but some people would not interpret that as that as being a good Muslim because you know they they interpret things differently. But um, it, it doesn't mean that it applies to everyone. It doesn't. But yeah, okay. Sorry, tired. And uh, let's listen to this woman hide behind religion for her bigoted I, I need about another minute and then I'll be able to tire it as well probably probably <laughs> okay three okay two one go go also that's where everything I am of him, and everything and I, I have never discriminate, comes from but I discriminate including my creativity uh huh my faith also teaches me that marriage is a sacred union between a man it and a woman. It also teaches me when that you don't care enough about, about your friends. Visit, my husband and I talked and prayed about it. I there would gladly no sell him to arrange flowers or lose flowers. And I knew that as much as I love Raw, I could not create something to celebrate an event that was totally against my faith. Against your faith. I didn't want to hurt Rob's feelings. Or against your bigotry. And I wanted to tell him as gently as possible. On that Friday, Rob came back. I took his hand in mine and told him I could not do his wedding because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship with Jesus. 
Rob said he understood and was very loving. We chatted as we always had. He talked about his mom walking him down the aisle, how we got engaged. Then Rob asked me to recommend another florist. And I recommended three that I knew would do him a good job. We hugged each other and Rob left. I was so thankful that Rob had graciously accepted my explanation and that we had parted as friends. Until a few weeks later, I got a letter in the mail from Washington State's Attorney General. The government was threatening to sue me unless I designed floral arrangements for same-sex weddings. I was in shock. It didn't seem possible to me that Rob would have filed a complaint, and he hadn't. The Attorney General saw a post Rob's partner had put on social media and decided on his own to threaten me to take away my livelihood unless I would create art for an event I didn't believe in. But I could never do that. I can't use the gift God gave me to violate my relationship God with him. God gave me the gift, not hard So enough. the government and the ACLU sued my business and me personally for discrimination. My lawyers and I have been battling this case in court for four years. My case is simple. Will I serve gay customers? Yes, I served Rob joyfully for over nine years and would welcome him back to my shop even but now. Will I hire gay employees? Yes, and I have. Will I let the government force me to create art expressing things I don't believe in? No, and that's my right. That's every American's First Amendment right. What does freedom of expression mean if the government tells me how to express my art? What does freedom of religion mean if the government tells me I can't live out my relationship with Jesus Christ? Just if I lose in court, no I will likely church. lose everything. The penalties and attorney's fees could be well over a million dollars. My business would be gone. My husband and I would lose our home and our retirement. But I have faith. God gave me a gift. And I just want to continue serving him by using that gift to bring beauty and joy into people's lives. Not the people that you don't like. Yeah. Rob and Kurt had the freedom to live their lives according to their beliefs. Should I not have that same right to? You should, but you shouldn't be hiding and, and using excuse. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yep. Okay. Okay. Did you did again? You this is just further excuses. This is again a point of using Hiding behind. your religion, using your faith as a shield, or also as a sword against the people that you personally have some kind of vendetta against. And again, what these people are failing to realize is that it is not a personal attack on them. This is. An ideology, this is a mindset that people cannot have. Any mindset the preachers, you know, hate, discrimination, intolerance, and, 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 and hate for, for people just for living their lives, you know, they're not. It, I'm starting to lose the words, I'm just getting to. And, and like, I get it about <laughs> not wanting to be forced to do art that you're not inspired to do. I get it, as I an was, artist. Yeah. But not in that context. And also, like, people say, don't feel terribly bad for it. Yeah, she did lose the case. She got fined. I think it was a 1000 is what I saw. Oh, she lost. But, okay. But she also got so much support and donations. Her donations were way over the fine she had to pay. She didn't lose anything. She gained a what lot. What was that figure that was a million? What was that? Where did that come from? Well, that it could be up to a million. Is what she oh, said. right. Okay. Didn't say she would be. It could be up to. Mm. Luna. Hey, Lena, you want to come join us in the bigotry? Yeah, she is joining us in the bigotry. She's ignoring me. She's like, get away, you trans queen. You creep. <laughs> but no. <laughs> so. <laughs> Pardon me. So um, the next ones I'm going to be sending to kind of like up the mood are the ones that are. Oh, uh, great. The, it's all the gone. It's all gone. Oh, you're back. Hello. Okay. I thought you were saying your thought was gone, not me. Well, well, yeah, you, you, you are my thought. <laughs> no boobs to readjust. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is a serious discussion about seriously backwards You caught me a thought! <laughs> Leave your boobs out of this. But not leaving me a thought out of this. Okay. 
All right, let's let's launch this next. Uh, so these are the ones that are kind of unintentional. This next weird. rabbit hole into happiness and peace and prosperity. Uh, this is just uh -huh. children too, because we gotta bring kids into this. We always yeah, bring we kids yeah. into it. Like a lot of the trans ads are gonna, a lot of the anti-trans stuff, they're gonna attack a lot of pedophilia, predatory children. Just a warning. And oh yeah, of course. Be yeah. Mainly attacking trans women. And be like they're mm -hmm. misogynist, so just a warning. Grandma, my teacher says if Grandpa was a girl, it's okay. You can still be married. If we change the definition of marriage, God creating Adam and Eve, that was so old fashioned. Our kids will be taught a new way of thinking. He oh, should have thought thinking new. Created Anna and Eve. If my dad married a man, who would be my mom? I'm confused. Marriage is between a man and a woman. They're only confused because you told them to be confused. They taught them to be confused. Children are, are pretty quick and easy learners. They're very adjustable. That's how they're able to learn. Very, very young and stuff. Mm -hmm. The only people who are actually confused are the parents. And the parents teaching them that this has to be... Also, they're redefining marriage. Yeah, that's happened a million times. Especially by Christians. Or people the Christian well, yes. um, like, again, it, it was used to be a pagan tradition. It used yeah, to allow yeah, hand, hand, hand. polygamy yeah. and stuff like that. Hand it's fastened. when they, 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 they put the, the, the kind of like rope or fabric around each of their arms, right? Hand fasting. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was gonna say again, again, the common theme between these, these, you know, uh, these videos again, it's, it's, it's the sympathy. They're trying to gain sympathy for their hatred and for their, you know, and that's why you have to attacks to it. against others. And yeah, this one's even worse because of the children things. But they all use the sad music. They all use, you know, the very dark lighting and, and, and the, the anguished voices of people who don't understand what's going on to I just kind of attacked. get I that message attacked. across. Ah, oh, again. How backwards do you need to be to walk forwards? I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Go. No. A sad music again. Hey, honey. How are you? Fine, I guess. What's going on? Well, Obama is trying to force gay marriage on this country. That's not the change I voted for. Marriage is between a man and a woman. That's not the change I voted for either. What can we oh, do? Oh, God, it's buffering. We can vote for someone with values. Well, you just have to watch it without me. <laughs> what I like about this is that the actors that they hired for this who obviously didn't get paid enough they don't even the entire like foundation to the worst you, you don't even know what you're talking about you don't even believe that stuff why are you trying so hard because the kush that good the kush that good okay more pro drugs as well not, i guess kush not money <laughs> 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 i don't know shit about drugs <laughs> No, the Kush is the is, is the wacky backy, the the the, the goddamn cannibalists, you know. I know. With the Mary Joanna. Also, who normally just casually be like, "This is the change I voted for. We gotta vote for Romney." That didn't go too well for him, which is a good thing. That's actually. But, uh, thing, oh, the current circumstance, though. Mm, yeah, it's a little bit different. 1950s. Oh, we're yeah, going we back into the history right. vault here. I think yeah. this will be the last gay one for now. Then I'll go into the anti-trans ones, and like I imagine, lots of like bathroom stuff. <laughs> and I think you might have saw the <gasps> Bennett thing reaction video I watched with. Um, yeah. There, there was there was a story I saw on Facebook recently about um, a trans person who got killed. I think in South America somewhere. It might have been in Mexico, actually. I'm not, I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, but I believe, yeah, she went into a bathroom. Um, and I th he got stabbed or shot to death or something. Like, like right there. It was horrible. Um, let me look that up because I, I want to corroborate that. Um, um, that reminds me. This I think this happened in California. Where, in California, it's supposed to be, you know, progressive, liberal, blah, blah, blah. And this Republican um, 
politician she she saw or her I don't know how she knew a trans woman was in the bathroom. I don't know how she knew that. I guess maybe she heard her voice or something. I have no idea. Because the lady's literally in the stall. And this woman's recording. This Republican woman is recording. I can't remember her name on top of my head. I have it written down somewhere. Her trying to heckle this trans woman out of the bathroom. And the woman's like, I'm just trying to pee here. Like, can I help you? Like, can you leave me alone? And she even went and she got the... This is like a restaurant. And she even went and got, like, people to come get her out of there and he was like can she finish peeing first like and she's recording you know this entire thing of her harassing and slowing slander at her and stuff like that and i'm like you're saying your vi- rights are being violated when you're literally violating someone else's rights you're violating her privacy right now you've got a camera in her face when she gets out of the bathroom she waited outside the bathroom to record her leaving you know and stuff like that I mean, it's just like, it was just, you're complaining about your rights being violated when you're literally violating another person and their rights and their privacy. No, but the point is, the and point... And she posted this video, and, like, she's some great hero. Yeah, like, in their, in their heads, though, exactly, their rights mean more to them than, than these other people. Because it isn't a uniform thing, it's just whatever they feel is right for them in their kind of head. I can't find any information about this thing I just mentioned, so it's probably best that I don't talk about it because I don't know all the facts. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I do that a lot, too, where I'm like, I don't know the facts, so I don't really want to discuss. No, it's, it's, um, no. But I, I, I just, I, I do know that one, because I, I did actually put it in one of my papers I was talking about, because I was talking about bathrooms and uh, having unisex bathrooms and stuff like that, and how most people think that trans people, or people who are using that excuse to be trans, is going to be the ones causing the harassment and causing the, you know, sexually violating people. That's gone the other way. And it's yeah. gone the other fucking way. Yeah. And it would go even worse too if you force trans women to go into men's rooms because you get someone that is wearing a dress and makeup and walks into a men's restroom because she's not allowed to use the restroom of her gender or vice versa where they have a trans man using a woman's restroom someone with a full beard and I, I actually some of the memes I got some of the pro memes actually I got do have that we're like well apparently North Carolina wants me to use the restroom do you ladies feel comfortable with me going in there and it's a trans man but he passes so well like they they're, they pass as well as you do kind of thing hmm. um I was just gonna say the again this phobia again it's just I know I've talked to you about this before but it's just um Xenophobia. it's the fi- it's it's the most basic fear that I think anyone has really just the fear of the unknown but the problem is people aren't willing to learn. And if they don't learn, they get scared because they don't understand. And then all this stuff happens because they, they get these preconceived notions in their head that they don't want to actually, you know, hit head on, educate themselves, and actually learn about it. There's one... I'm not so sure if I'm going to show it. I did see a little bit of it because I didn't want to watch too many of these. Like, I didn't want to spoil too much of them. Um, but she was, like, on Fox News, and she's a feminist, and she's talking about why she's anti-trans and stuff like that. So she's a turf. Um, and, oh no, I'm slowing slander. How dare I say slander? Oh my god. Turks oh. so pissed off being called Turks. It's kind of hilarious. Um, but yeah, so, and she's saying like, they're going to, you know, predators are going to use this excuse to get to the bathroom. Like, here's my biggest thing. And I guess I can get on this when we do watch the anti-trans stuff. But I made this point also in my paper. They already do, whether or not, not, they don't use trans as an excuse, but they already do find ways into those bathrooms with or without those laws. That's true. Mm. I've, I've heard terrible stories of little girls being attacked or nearly attacked by creeps who go into the bathroom to try sexually harassing, molesting, kidnapping, whatever, women or little girls. And here's my other point I want to make too. Men... And this is going to blow some people's mind. AMABs and men aren't the only perpetrators. You mean women and AFABs can also be sexual predators? I'll pull up sites if I have to to get people to believe me. But it happened. I mean, yeah, we, we, again, we talked about the whole teacher thing. Well, the whole yeah, disparity between I, those two that, things. That's yeah, not also been yeah. discussed here on camera. And yeah. another thing, little boys could also be victims. Yeah, of but course they can. we don't care about that. Because the children, the ch- the literal children, they, they they can't consent to anything. And, and men, grown men can be victims too, mm. but 
we don't talk about that. That's more of a societal thing in general, though. That's the thing. That's not just isolated to a minority of people who are spewing hate and such. That is just a condition of, of the society kind of thing. We, we don't like to talk about females and AFABs being perpetrators, and we don't like to talk about males and AMABs being victims. It's just... No, we don't. Because we already have those pre-established notions. And, like, I was, t I was this thing on Twitter that ended up happening, and then Fina I commented on, because um, someone, like, it was, like, a hard-to-swallow pill, and the person reblogs and said uh, men can be victims of rape, too. And I commented, I'm like, this, exactly. I cover this a lot in my stories. And there's also mentioning in, in something along the lines of, I have it right in front of me, I'm like, it's also noteworthy for people to realize that women can be perpetrators, too, whether it be to other females or men. Or to males. Mm -hmm. And someone said, statistically, though, it's less percent women than men, right? Um, as in women perpetrators. And I'm like... And, and someone else also commented, too. I think the person did the original post. But I commented originally, well, the point isn't the statistics. The point is that it happens, but most mm -hmm. people don't want to acknowledge or talk about it. People usually no. associate men in AMAB as perpetrators and never as victims, and women AFABs as the opposite. And then he also added later... Um, Another thought just hit me about the statistics. For all we know, they are incredibly wrong, and oftentimes estimates. Like, that's actually a fact. Usually they are estimates. They're not usually the exact statistics. I mean, most statistics usually are, but especially with sexual assault, because usually it's estimated that these men, this sexual assault happened because most victims of sexual assaults and rape do not come forward, and they're even more less likely to if they are male. That being said, mm -hmm. probably still true, but that's not the point. Um, and the because again, it's societal conditioning because they understand that role and that kind of, you know, it obviously terrifies them from doing it about because they know the reaction they're going to get. Yeah, and the the disbelief, the, you know, the stigma even. It's a stigma. And it's a stigma because it's like, you, oh, that shouldn't happen to you. You're a man, you know. Yeah, you, man up. Kind of man up. It's like, yeah, what? Just deal with it. Oh, you got yeah. sex, dude. What are you complaining about? If it's from a female, at least. If it's from a male, then it's just like, well, you should have manned up and, like, be his ass. Right? And the other person also, com the original poster also comment, doesn't matter the percentage or statistics, but matters that it happens, and people like feminists and non-victims need to realize that it can hurt a man's life when it does. All right, to our next ad from the 50s. I think I actually have seen this one, but... All right. This is also from the list of hilariously bad anti-gay ads. <laughs> Boys, beware, because lesbians look exist. innocent enough, doesn't it? Lots of young people hitchhike. Seems like a good way to get from one place no, to another. Not. But sometimes there are dangers involved that never meet the not eye. Not because they're homosexuals, so no it's matter bad where to you do. meet a stranger, be careful if they are too friendly. One never knows when the homosexual is about. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Let's take the case of Jimmy Bond. Not homosexual. Not, not serial killers. Not pedophiles. Just homosexuals. He didn't feel like walking home, so he decided to thumb a ride. I don't like walking He'd done it so. a hundred times before, and he didn't think anything was unusual when the driver struck up a friendly conversation. In fact, he seemed like a real nice guy. What Jimmy didn't know was that Ralph did was the gay sick. Pat. A sickness that was not visible like smallpox, but no less dangerous and contagious, a sickness of the mind. You see, Ralph was a homosexual, a person who demands an Demands. intimate relationship with members of their own sex. So no matter where you meet a stranger, be careful if they are too they friendly, the gay if they try to win your confidence too quickly, and if they become overly personal. One never knows when the homosexual uh, I love how that, that's, that list, they don't specify if it's from some of the same sex. Just that if this person's too friendly, they might be gay. So what I'm getting from it... Well, that's literally like, like, that's literally really scam friendly. mongering if I've ever seen her. Yeah. So what I'm getting from this gate, people are just really friendly. If they're overly friendly, if they try being calm, over, uh, they, they try to ask you personal things, which is like what anyone would do anyway. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's literally, it's literal fear mongering. It's literally it is, and, and again, that's coming from a place of ignorance. It's and coming it's from a place of fear of the unknown too. Exactly, it is fear of the unknown. That's exactly what it is. That's the root of every, of all of it. That's the root of all of it, because if, if you're educated about it, if you truly understood, then there wouldn't be a cause to, you know, to, to have that hatred, because that hatred comes from a place of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear, fear of, of, of not understanding. And if we had a lot more education on this, 
there wouldn't be that fear. A lot more. What they don't want, they don't want that. They want the yeah, yeah. ignorance because they're already in the ignorance. Think it's a cycle. Like as you remember, like in the storm one, they're like they're yeah, teaching yeah. my children. They're teaching them about that it's okay. Homosexuality. I don't. I don't want to like switch over to another hot button issue, but it's the anti-vax thing all over again. Again, that's another example of oh, uneducatedness and stuff and causing storm actual storm. physical harm. That's even more. That's like even more, like, you know, sure endemic. That storm coming was before the anti-vaxing started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some of the um, stuff is old. Uh, but again, I mean, like uh, another. <laughs> that's that's another thing that you can kind of transpose across because in both those cases with an anti-vax parent or an anti-gay parent. Um, both cases, they don't understand. They're scared of it. They don't want to be educated about it. And they try and transpose that fear on their children. And and one person who they feel that they can believe and trust posts about what they the lines of their beliefs. Posts, oh, vax are causing autism in children. Uh-huh. And here's my real big gripe about that one, where it's like, you'd rather your child be be dead, yeah, be dead. Then literally have dead instead autism. of having a if condition. you cannot handle this is my my firm belief you cannot handle having a child with special needs a child who is queer of some sort be it trans or gay a child who you know any of the above mental health issues you cannot handle a child you are not ready to be a parent you if you're parent, not prepared no. to parent anything if you're not prepared to love your child for being who they are, then you are that's, not that's coming from a you know, prepared to be a parent. One of my partners has autism. One of my cousins, autism. And I love them, all the same. That doesn't make me... That doesn't them. detract from who they are, no, it no. doesn't. I mean, it might add a little bit to who they are, but they're, you know... And actually, sometimes people with autism could be, like, insanely smart. Like, she's out of my fucking leg, man! <laughs> <laughs> you cursed like, again? You're dating me. All right, I am. Are we? Are we moving on to the trans stuff now? Yes, this is the trans stuff. This is no okay. three. No. One. no. What does Massachusetts Question Three mean to you? It means any man who says he is a woman can enter a woman's locker room, dressing room, or bathroom at any time, even convicted oh, sex Jesus. offenders. And if you see something suspicious and say something to authorities, you could enter. be the one or arrested and fined up to fifty thousand dollars. Vote no on three. This bathroom bill puts our privacy and safety at risk. Can, it goes too far. I'll go wait until the ad's done, but I want to talk about that. Uh, so can you can you go to that picture for this no on three, and they have that little like silhouette of the person standing over on top of the toilet? You see what I'm seeing, right? Where <laughs> on top of the toilet. The toilet, if you're looking over the stall, would not be facing that direction. No. That's just bad design, surely. Yeah, yeah. If you could have made the toilet <laughs> face the other way, I'm sorry, but your art is flawed. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure. The art isn't sure, the only thing that's flawed I'm with this sure whole thing, anyway. There's some more important really things. Hard. There's some more important things that are probably, you know, issues here, honestly. Again, scaremongering. Scaremongering yeah. ignorance. Oh, yeah. and, um, and they had to have a young girl to this, too. Yeah. The other thing, there was another thing. Yeah, it's the fact that they jump to the most extreme circumstance, which is not. I mean, I don't know the statistics and this kind of thing, but I'd assume that it's relatively rare for something like that to happen. Anyway, I don't remember if I got the actual number. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm not going to on top of my head right now. I, I have them somewhere in my files and documents for papers I've done, and the statistics of people trying to use. Oh, I'm trans as an excuse, and most of these people didn't actually identify as trans. They didn't legally get diagnosed with gender dysphoria or try transitioning. Mm-hmm. They just tried using it as a plea. Was still incredibly low. And this is again possible. taking into account your previous statement about how if someone's going to do that, they're going to do it anyway. Yeah. They don't need. They, they, they don't need an excuse. Wait yeah. for the law to pass so that they can legally do it. And here's the because thing. Even if you were a woman peeping in on another woman, that's still illegal. That's still sexual harassment. Yeah, yeah that still counts. It's still, like, it's still illegal. What they're doing is still illegal. Them entering the bathroom, not illegal. What they're doing in the bathroom is illegal. Mm. <sighs> Be them cis, trans, AMAB, or AFAB. It's still illegal what they're doing in the bathroom. Entering the bathroom is not illegal. What they're doing in it is. 
boom. Um, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I unplugged myself again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mind blown too hard, but no. <laughs> Oof, not for the first time. Mind blown too hard? I'm going to have to censor things here. Um, <laughs> no, so... And that, that's something that I feel like people don't get, too. It's like, yeah, they could legally enter that bathroom, but that, that doesn't mean what they're doing in the bathroom is going to be rubbed off as not legal or illegal or whatnot. It's just... They're not... And, and so I've actually seen, especially to, like, these ones, I've seen responses to these... Um, to these ads... Um, and if you want, just so you can have some positivity, I could play that one um, when we're done with these. When we look at <laughs> positive trans memes, I think, I think we need positivity. Honestly. Yeah, that's why. That's why I yeah. grabbed also positive trans memes just to be like. <sighs> and actually, and I know we haven't gone to the memes yet, um, the anti memes yet. But there was one anti meme I saw, and I wish I did grab it. But the problem is, I was going to screenshot it and stuff like that because it was like text that was underneath it that was part of it. And it was mm -hmm. the normal, like, male-female signs, the blue boy and the, the pink girl, you know, dress, pants, whatever. And under the boy's XY and under the girl's XX. And someone complained, like, someone was like, well, it's just a fact. Just stating a fact is what, like, the first person was saying. The second person was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know you were a turf. Like, I'm going to unfollow you and stuff like that. And someone was like, oh, dear God, apparently it's, you know, not okay to state biological facts. Like, apparently that makes you a turf, you know. And I get... I do get where these people are coming from with chromosomes. That isn't, but those aren't gender. That's sex. But people want to act like intersex people don't exist. And when you bring up the intersex people, they're like, well, that's just an exception. That's, that's the common argument trans people like to use is intersex. What's well, okay it's for such, them to say? It's such an exception that I happen to know like three or more intersex people personally. It's like, why, why is it okay for them to say all that kind of things, but then you see that you call them a turf, and that's when they actually start getting a bit irate. But, 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 this is exactly like the stupid, um, the, um, the OK Boomer thing. That's, that's, that's oh like no, completely you demonetized. like... you've demonetized my video! <laughs> Continue. Yeah, because people were getting upset because they were saying all these horrible things about millennials and things, and it was like, oh yeah, they come back with something else. It's like, oh no, that's a slur, you can't do that, you can't also, attack me. Boomer was a term made by baby boomers. <laughs> they're made by baby boomers and i was never using it like in fact i didn't know this was a thing until people were complaining that it was a thing and i was just like <laughs> wait wait they're upset this is they're like in the news and everything i'm pretty sure the bbc ran a story on it because they were just like why are people getting so upset over it like, i was ridiculous. on twitter and i started seeing these things on twitter and like i want to mention like i was only on twitter because like i'm networking and art and stuff and i start seeing people talk about the okay boomer thing and i'm just like what is this about? What? What's going on? Why are baby boomers being upset about people using the term that they created? But sim similarly, again, th these are two major groups that are attacking other people. But as soon as they put up a shield, as soon as they you know fight back a little, it's like, oh, you can't do that. But um, how I dare you do that? I know I told you the bus story, the bus driver story. Um, and I did mention. Share anyway. yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah. maybe I'll get into it, but I did mention to him yeah. about intersex people, and was like, "Well, that's just an exception. That's just that's a common one that trans like to pull up, but it's not. It's very rare, you know." Um, I can't remember the percentage, but people of hypospadias, which is a type of intersex, very. It's as common as red hair. Mm -hmm. It's I, I don't remember the exact statistic number, but it's as common as red hair. You want to tell me that's a completely unheard of rare exception now when people are thinking intersex they're usually thinking a penis and vagina which is the most rare form one of the most rare forms of intersex i'm saying it's the rarest form but it's what people want to think when they hear hermaphrodite mm -hmm. um but intersex is a lot more common than people think like i said i personally know about three people one of them is my partners who are intersex and i didn't search for them it's not like I went to a trans group and found them there. I <laughs> yeah. met them by happen chance, happenstance. It just was just by chance. My best, one of my best friends from high school, and I didn't know she was intersex until she told me later down the road. It's not like I knew, like, hey, I'm queer, you're queer too, and you're intersex. Oh, I found another one, you know. No, 
I didn't even know that. I, and in fact, she told me after I discovered the term was. She's like, oh, yeah, I, I'm actually intersex. I'm like, oh, cool. Oh. And I don't know what, what the extent of intersex is, but it's not my place to ask. It's not my business. I'm not going to ask her what's in your no, that's fair What's enough. your hormones? What's this or that? She wants to tell me. She can. Cool. No, but again, so, some, some people think that that's an okay thing to say just because... Be- because, like, it's, yeah, you wouldn't go up to, to a cis guy or someone like me and just be like, oh, what's in your pants? It's like, yeah. Because you hey, would assume. Hey, 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 capybara, what color is your tip? And like, that's, that's like. You already like, know? But he, and that's, this is one, because uh, people get even more offended if it's a female or a fab that you are being a cis woman, if you're being invasive of a cis woman's genitalia. So my thing is. You would, you should not ask a trans person what's in their pants because it's the same as me going up to a cis woman and be like, "So, what color is your clitoris? What color is your walt lips? You know, like, what is, is, does your does the carpets match the drapes or whatever? You know, like, you don't ask that <laughs> sexual harassment. But when you're trans, it's suddenly okay to ask. Oh no! It's suddenly like you're not human enough for me to give you the decency I would give to other humans. And that happens too with people who are no, I think- fashion and stuff like that. I, th- I think honestly, I, th- I think I think some part of that, at least in my mind, I'm trying to rationalize it. Um, and by it, okay, I was just gonna say like like by by I guess kind of outing yourself or something or kind of being visibly different or whatever way that kind of gives them that entitlement. Is like you're strange kind of thing. I, I need to know everything. To get attention. Yeah, you're yeah, to get exactly. Attention. You said lots in the fashion. It's very similar. And I've been outed when I'm not even trying. To, I'm trying to blend in, be as male looking as possible and i still had people being like so this is my first time actually talking to a trans person and i'm like i never told you that you're assuming that of me no, like, like you say like it's not like you don't like you shouldn't have to go around and be like oh i'm a trans man you could just be i'm a man because you know like, you are. i don't want it's that to be like... my sole identity surprise surprise well, exactly that's not like it's a part of who i am but it's not, it's not like entirely who you are, no. It's just this, no. this little segment of who I am. Um, and I also wanted to mention, I understand also that a lot of people don't mean harm by it. A lot of people don't. They don't mean any harm. They're just mm-hmm. ignorant and curious. They just want to know. And I don't want to punish people for wanting to know. But Because on education know, and unknowing is the root of the problem as well. Yes, that's, that's, that's exactly. Yeah. So I don't want to punish them for that. But at the same time, i got to tell them, the way you're going about it is There wrong. needs to be boundaries. And yeah. yeah. Whilst I might I might be comfortable sharing that information with you, you can't just ask that of any anyone. Not just trans people, just no. can't just ask that of anyone. You know? No, it's just, it's just like, and yeah. and there's boundaries and you need to be careful. Like if that person wants to tell you and give you this information, then that's great. Like I showed you that one meme where it's like how how people uh, when trans person are mentioning their gender for me about cis people and they're like i am getting gender affirming surgery and they're like oh how brave or how how scary and then in the trans community <laughs> i'm getting this titties cut off yo and then i like, yeah. can't and whilst i was like that with you the second half where i was like yeah i'm getting my you um you're a safe space for me and i'm comfortable with you and i would talk mm. to you about that it took a lot just for me to tell my mom exactly what it was i was doing like I told yeah, her, said, I you didn't surgery. tell them what the surgery was exactly. Yeah, you I told just her like, I was getting surgery, yeah. and yeah. then when she pried, when she the pushed for more information, things. I was like, okay, I'll tell her. But when one of my actors, um, when he asked me what kind of surgery I had, he didn't ask uh, if it was trans or anything related like that. I just didn't even tell him it was a transgender affirming surgery. I just told him, oh yeah, it's kind of a personal one, so I won't really get into details. But we'll just say I got something removed, you know. I think that honestly, there needs to be some kind of balance there between the openness and you know your, your personal stuff, like on both sides. Yes, people need to be educated, but they don't need to know everything. You know, they don't. You don't. You shouldn't have to tell. I don't go around and tell people, you know, everything about me. Like something I appreciate about Laverne Cox is that she refuses to talk about it on air, and that's her right. I respect that, and she yeah. will, she stopped she stopped interviewers before, where she's like. Look, you can ask me these questions in person or private, but on air, this is not what this is about. This is not about that. This is about this, you know? Um, and I appreciate that. But I also do like the idea of some people, trans people, do coming forward and talking about just so that people know that just because you're trans does not mean you're going to get every single operation. And that, 
no, another thing. There's more than one the surgery. That that's that's that actually was asked of me by one of my new friends recently. Um, and she's from the UK too. And I met her through like a a contest thing I was in, and she did ask me if I was getting the surgery done, and I was like, which the surgery. <laughs> Well, especially with your trans mask, there's I feel like there's way more surgeries for a trans mask person than there is for a trans femme person. But there's another mm-hmm. thing is like not every trans binary person is gonna get every single thing. Like one of my partners doesn't want to get downstairs surgery, and that's more power to her. Good for her. She, you know, um, not every non-binary person doesn't want to transition. I'm transitioning, and I identify as non-binary. I'm on hormones, and I'm getting surgeries done. And I think that can be important to talk about to a certain extent just so people realize because people have this assumption like oh you're trans or you're gonna get the surgery and stuff like that i'm like but not every trans person does or wants to like not everyone has that problem with that part like i remember watching an interview with an intersex person and she had a rare condition where she did have both parts but and she had the hormones too but she was not aware of her vagina because the skin was skin grown over the opening and so she mm. had to get surgery to open that up. So it was very similar. It was somewhat similar to like um, normal trans surgeries. Um, but she, and she said on an interview, like, "Yeah, I'm keeping my penis." Um, and she was joking, like a lot of women already. And she identifies as female. She she was assigned male at birth, but she identifies as female, and she's getting the surgery to you know affirm that. And. Um, and she does look female. And she, like I said, she also already had the hormones. And like when she was in high school is when she really started to notice, I'm not growing like most boys. And so she figured and figured. And then eventually she finally got an MRI that confirmed this. And like in her adult life, she had a vagina this entire time and didn't know until she got an MRI, mm-hmm. you know, as an adult. And she had to go to, like she, I think she was like from, I can't remember what country she was from, but she went to Germany and got her MRI there. Um, I might leak her if I can remember her, who she is. But, but it's, um, yeah, that's about, like, that's literally just body autonomy. But, but part which of it is she was joking know. about why she wanted to keep a penis. It's like, women already want one in the sense that they want to stand a penis. Yeah. They want an e- it makes it easier access is what she was, you know, joking about. It's like advantages and, and stuff. And, and um, so, yeah, I, I can relate to that. I want a penis. So, <laughs> well, one of my things I'm looking forward to is standing to pee. It is a lot easier, honestly. But. But anyway, yeah. um, the, um. Like I said, yeah, it's like it's body autonomy, and it's 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 your body at the end of the day, you know, like like okay, like like no. the way or the correct at least the correct way to call it is gender affirmation surgery, as you said. You need to affirm your gender. You need to feel comfortable with your body. So whatever it is you need to do to do that, you do it. If it doesn't conform to someone else's standards, then you know, damn them anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, it's people, your body. People like to assume like to assume trans people are crazy for wanting to like. Oh, and you're gonna see one of the memes like, oh, cut off your penis to prove what you believe. Um, but people, and, and yeah, people do give some shit to people who get, like, Botox or face surgery or whatnot, but they don't I mean, call them crazy. They don't call no, them I mean, crazy for wanting to change this, this, this. I've, I've people get, va- there's women who get their vaginas redone. That aren't or, you know, people who, who get their asses bleached and stuff. <laughs> or makeup or hair coloring kind of or piercings. Yeah. That's not natural. That's not how we were born. But you don't. I, I, I guess that. people perceive them as drastic changes when it comes to trans things, as Ted. Because, you know, you, you kind of like at least. Maybe some people are into, you know, um, permanently changing parts of themselves, kind of things, which is seen as more extreme. Or whatever. Um, and like, and part of my reason for wanting to re- get a hysterectomy wasn't just because it was trans, mainly because it's trans. It, it did bo- bother me, but also because I never, I, to a certain extent, it was kind of a sterilization too, because I would never, in good conscience, pass on my genetics. Um, at the same time, it was also like a whole. It was causing me problems. It was giving me really bad menstruation and stuff like that. And oh, of course, yeah, bloody hell! And <laughs> bloody hell, indeed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, no, that wasn't intentional. But no, um, it felt like it. But then, as a trans person, also was causing me to feel bad about my gender and stuff like that. And that's not the case for every. Like, I, I, a lot of trans mask people that I personally know don't want bottom surgeries. Um, some trans mass people even want to carry their own children. And that's... That's, that's their right. That's their right, that's their you right. know. 
And What's that most choice? of them that want top surgery and or have started getting top surgery or are in the process of it. Me, I'm the opposite. And these are personally, I know. Like, I know I'm not the only... Like, obviously, there are trans people who are getting bottom surgery because that's why it exists. But the people I personally know, at least in my age group for the most part, have been the exact opposite of me. That I've talked to about it too. I know that there's been a few trans people I have not talked to about it. Because it's their right. I don't even know what's going on in their pants. I mean, to a certain extent, it's nice to know <laughs> so that... And it's not the whole thing. It's not my. It's not my business. I'm not, just because I'm trans does not give me the right to be like, "Hey, what's in your pants?" No, it doesn't. But <laughs> no, no one has that right. To though. a certain extent, it's it does true. kind of help if, like, I'm like, "Hey, I'm gonna get surgery, and I want to know if someone else has had surgery so that they can give me tips and, you know, stuff like that." It's still different that way if they want to tell me. But I'm not saying, "Hey, tell me what's in your pants," you know, or asking them, "Hey, what's in your pants? Have you gotten the surgery?" It's more of out there like hey i'm planning a surgery so if anyone has had it if they could maybe give me some tips but you don't have to if you don't want to um yeah it might be oversimplifying it but again yeah if anyone walks over to me it's just like oh let's see that dick i'm gonna be like no what are you talking about <laughs> leave me alone i, I also because <laughs> i haven't said to the people watching yes i am wearing two pair of headphones um <laughs> so these are so i could hear Captain you edit that out and these are so i could hear the ads because right now my, yeah my, my I, I just have my recording things being finicky, so I can't listen to them on the same source. So yeah, to the um, video we were watching videos or something like that. This is more fun than I thought it would be. Yeah, and honestly. it's very intellectual. I would feel. Yeah, it makes me feel like I'm a smart boy for once. I mean, I am. I just don't try and like bring that across as much because I have to like bring it down for you. I have to like lower my intellect, otherwise I won't get to like communicate with you. That's the uh, the issue. I'm just too smart. Luda walks into the shot. Hey there. Luna's the only one that loves me and thinks I'm smart. Well, she's not. She probably thinks I'm a fucking idiot. Um. I mean, you you are smart for in, in cat terms and the, the fact that you're not a cat and you're smarter than a cat. But apart from that, you know, not really that much. I told you. Houston's Proposition 1 bathroom ordinance. What does it mean to you? Any man at any time could enter a woman's bathroom simply by claiming to be a woman that day. No one is exempt. Even registered sex offenders could find Wait, oh, didn't you see this one? Into the bathroom, and if it's the, the same exact facts. Them, they'd be it's fine. a different country, uh, state. Protect women's privacy. Prevent danger. Vote no on the Oh, it is. Okay, you're right. Yeah, the ending's a bit different. Most of it's the same, though. Oh, this is a little girl. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, the, the other one was that a makes it girl, too. She was still a young girl in the other one. Was she? Teenager, maybe preteen. Um... Also, it's a different sta uh, state, though, or area, because the other one was Massachusetts, and then um, this is Houston. Also, it's a different thing, so that was three, and this is one. Um, so, um, like you said, pretty much a carbon copy of the other one. It's just different actors, and they make it more dramatic by using black and white. Um, but yeah, so there's not much more to say on that. It's, like I said, it's pretty much like, almost a carbon copy. Yeah, again, the worst, literally worst case scenario. Yeah, it's the worst case scenario. And the fact, and again, and, you don't need an excuse. You don't I need love, an excuse. I love like how that. they always have to hit the thing. Even a registered sex offender. Yeah. Woman can it's be like registered there isn't registered sex offenders who, who wouldn't, you know. And, and also, registered sex oh. offender doesn't always imply pedophilia. They could have done something of a prostitute or a sex worker or something. Especially it's like public adult. exposure or something. Public exposure, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they could also be gay, meaning this could happen in the men's room too. But that doesn't matter because men aren't victims. Oh. Right? Mm. Mm. And and then also, women could be sex offenders, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> the demon. Oh my god! Please, pl talk. please, yeah, please keep that voice real. Ed, we don't talk about. <laughs> we don't talk about this. No. The demons will be summoned if we do. Men are not the victims. Men they are never hunters. the victims. And women are never <laughs> the hunters. That implies a woman could be like a man. Oh, that's also... Oh, actually, actually, I'm going to get off a little off topic because this is going to go on just off misogyny and toxic masculinity in general. Um, but that's just... <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> Please, don't die. Oh, uh, and this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I'm going to bring up the Gillette or Gillette ad. 
Oh, yes. And I, I guess there was some stuff about them having child labor and stuff. Okay. That aside, specifically focusing on this ad that had a big negative uproar for most people because they felt they were attacking men. Um, this is a Jilla ad that was like, the boys will be boys is a face that we need to get rid of. You know, it's basically saying this not it's eradicate the culture of sexual assault and blah, blah, blah. It was a good message. But if you look at the actual YouTube, there's not a single positive comment. Not a single positive comment. They're like, you just lost a, you know, you just lost a lifetime customer and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, well, oh, yes, attack your main demographic. It's a good idea. I'm like, <laughs> if their main demographic is rapists and people doing sexual harassment, I think they would want to lose that. Personally, as a person, if I, if I was a company, uh, if if my, my main demographic were people who condone rape and sexual harassment, no, I don't want you buying my stuff. Please go away. I don't care if that costs me a lot of money. If you're feeling attacked by this ad, then honey, I've got some news for you. You're going to jail. <laughs> or you are condoning people who should be going to jail. Um, Because people, people felt so attacked by it. And I'm like, how? How are you feeling so attacked by this unless you are condoning sexual assault? I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I do. No, I've seen this ad. Um, the boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. Um, well, the thing is, because it, it's it's directly hitting that culture and that like conditioning on its head. That's why it's got such a bad response. Because people understand that that is the culture. But that's the way they've we been need conditioned. To change the culture. It is, but they don't want to see it that way. That's the issue there. They don't want to believe they're part of the problem, even though they know they are. Because it's the ignorance factor again. It's like I'm not the issue here. Everything else is. So you go out and you attack the things that are making you feel that way. And, and the reason I bring it up, even though we're talking about you know gay and trans, is because what's rooted, what, one of the biggest things rooted in homophobia and transphobia is misogyny and toxic masculinity. Mm -hmm. um, there's this book that I read in my class called Sign Life and Gender. Highly recommend it. It's not just about LGBT. It's not even mainly about LGBT stuff. Um, I know I'm bored. I know it's like 11 p.m. for you. But um, there's this one story that talked about sexuality in both male and female sport teams. And they talked about uh, male athletes that came out as gay and how they felt they had to be even manlier because they had to make up for being gay. <laughs> and then with females, they felt like the opposite where they had or they had to be even more feminine outside of their sports just so people mm. didn't assume they were lesbian. Like, look at me. I'm still a pretty girl. wants to be fucked, you know, by a guy. Um <laughs> The reason why it's bad to be... One of the reasons why it's bad to be gay is because it's associated with feminine. Associated with femininity. And mm -hmm. femininity, female, is bad. It's lesser. It's a regression if a guy goes that way. And it's somewhat progressive if a girl tries to be more manly. But at the same time, it's also a no-no because she'll never pre quite be. If a girl starts acting assertive, if a woman starts being assertive or strong, she's a bitch. She's not, she's not mm -hmm. as powerful as a man. She's... She's just being a bitch. She's just being overdramatic, stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's a marginalization process. Yeah. And this is stuff that I'm quoting from, like, my professors in, in college mm. and stuff like that. So if you want to be like, oh, get educated, this is coming from my college education. Get educated, yeah, get college educated, mofo. And in my college, it's pretty much the same as university over where you're at. Well, what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, my college. Um, so... But yeah, so that's why I bring up toxic masculinity and mis misogyny, misandry. And and I want to say, though, a lot of um, TERFs or people with a TERF mentality, they actually kind of are misandrist. The, if you don't know what misandrist is, it's often misogynist, where it's hate. That's what I assumed, yeah. Hmm. Where, and I personally, but, Mike, you're but they, not... That, that's Oh, sorry, I was going to say, no, that, that's that's something that I, I didn't, like, even know of that term, because that's not really something condi that yeah. considered to be realistic. Because stuff like that. Because you can't attack men, apparently. And, and if personally, if you're a feminist and you have negative views towards men as a whole, like, if you have, if there's one or two men, yeah, but if you think all men as a whole are rapists, predators, this or that, bad people... You are not a feminist. Mm. And I know, and I'm also coming from someone that, as a trans mass person, so does as a feminist and knows 
binary cis male feminist. You can be a feminist no matter your gender assigned or learned in life. Learned. You know what I meant. Um, <laughs> learned that your gender is not your assigned gender. Whether you're trans or cis, male, AMAB or AFAB, you can be a feminist kind of thing. And to me, you, you have feminist ideals, views. I could, would consider you a feminist. Um, mm-hmm. A real I'm, feminist. I'm, I'm more of like a, just a peopleist, honestly. That, I think. That's what um, feminist is supposed to be. But because the term yeah, it's, like, it's true. It, it's true. It got misconstrued as woman. 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 Oh, 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 oh. We have been woman. blessed. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Oh, oh, yeah, zoom in on this. Look at that. Look at that. How precious is she? People are be like, "Oh, she's got a bow tie." So it's, it's, he's got a bow tie, but but no. Um. <laughs> all right. That was like the that was like that scene from Lion King, but even cuter. The somehow. circle of life. <laughs> well, we still had a monkey holding up a cat, so it worked out. Perfect. Wait. I'm Perfect. not getting a main picture. Okay. I'm a professional. I can do this. <laughs> a poor kitty. Steve owns a gym in Anchorage, but if Proposition 5 passes, Steve will be forced to open the women's locker room to anyone who claims a female identity. If Steve says yes, he'll lose customers, and if he says no, he can be fined or imprisoned. Anchorage is already a tolerant city. Vote oh, Alaska. No on Proposition 5. First comment, um, your main concern is losing customers, eh? And secondly, um, I love something, and don't stop me if I'm reading too much into it, how he's this blonde white man, and he has to have like a savior complex because he has to be the man to do the right thing and be like, I must protect the woman. But then again, they, don't make it, they didn't make it about protecting women, they just meant that he will lose his female customers. I said, might be reading too much into it. I don't know. I mean, this, yeah, about 14 seconds in, there's him standing in front of the, the changing room with his hand out, like, oh, and then it's one of them in jail. Yeah, it's one of them in jail, but he still has the same expression on his face because he's this big, strong dude. That's more bad he public perception of, of men in general, you know. And he's also the I mean, you know, you're, you're not, you're not like the one being unjustly treated. Yeah. I was gonna, I was just gonna throw a slayer at you just then, so it's it's a good thing you cut me off. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's fine. I was gonna laugh for you for being short. It's okay. But that's it. I'm done. Well, I mean, it all fits with my name at this point. I'm the little king in the fairies. I gotta stay short so I can be the little king. The thing is, Steve is not the average guy. He's the like, the ideal representation of the male hero. Savior complex. Exactly what I was saying. Because I mean, you're you're also a guy. Yeah, you're not. You know, you're not blonde or like big and super muscly. You're muscly, but you're not like super muscly. Oh yeah, it's not obvious. Not to the not to <laughs> forget me. But if you if you see me like working, if people work with me, then they can definitely mm-hmm. tell. Like I've had it before, where I'll let go. Of, I was helping someone carry something, a group of people carrying something, and the moment I walked away from it, apparently it got heavier for everyone. But you, but from appearances alone, you don't match that kind of same ideal, idealized kind of thing. Sure. So I'm not even yeah. naturally blonde. I'm not even dyed blonde for the most part. Can we, so can we get a flex I, just real quick? You can't see it underneath. Yeah, only for the layers of muscle. It looks even bigger with the sleeves being loose on me, but I need to shop at the boys section. Um, okay, so I have another one. I actually not sure where this one's going because it starts with. Is that a jail? It looks like a bathroom. Uh, Wait, now it's a merry-go-round. Yeah, so it's not merry-go-round. Uh. Go. Another fucking bathroom. That's all that people care about with trans people is bathrooms. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look how shady he looks. It's black and white again. Contrasting with the color of the other thing. Mm. Made this legal. Is that what you want in Gainesville? GAINESVILLE! 
It's good. Yeah, so that's what I go as well. We were like... just talking about this, man. It's where I belong. Steve's Dang. gym <laughs> must be there. Yeah, Steve's, Dang, yeah, Steve's all over Gainesville. That's his, that's his, that's his tone. Okay, but here's here's this other one, The Truth, by this governor dude. This governor dude. I, his name, his name. Well, he's not, he's not the governor. He's running for governor. Yeah, running I hope governor. he didn't win. I'm yes, Ralph Abraham. I'm running yeah. for governor. And here's the truth. Life begins at conception. Oh. Government is too big. Our taxes are too high. And our car insurance is too expensive. <laughs> President Trump is doing a great job. He lost me when he said life begins at conception. More than feelings. The Second Amendment is self-explanatory. And as a doctor, I can assure you there are only two genders. I'm Republican conservative Ralph Abraham. I'm running for governor, and that's the truth. Uh, I hope he didn't win. I don't know if he did win. No idea. Ralph Abraham, let me look. Help is on the way, Abraham, for governor. Um... Cause he, he is, uh, no, he's not. He's not. He's not a governor. That's good. Gender it's and this. sex aren't the same thing. And what about intersex people? <laughs> Once again, as a doctor, you should. They always seem to be getting forgotten, don't they? Kind of like pushed under the rug. It's like trans mask and queer women are often like put. Thrash under the rug too. Intersex are your, like don't fucking exist. People don't even know what the heck that term means half the time. They're like, what's intersex? Hermaphrodite. Ow. Ow. Oh. Not really the right term, but that's the term they're gonna know. There's all there's all kinds of like horrendous terms, I guess. But become normalized because people use them all the time. And then become societized and cultured. Oh, right. Oh, Sorry, I'm gone taking too far. I have way too many anti memes. Ugh. I grabbed like 36. We're moving on to memes now? Yeah, I mean, that's why I keep watching some more videos, but I think we've kind of broken those down a lot. The trans memes, the anti trans ones are pretty similar in spirit. Mm. Um, where they're all like bathroom, 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 bathroom. But uh, of course, this one links back to the whole everyone thinks. Gay people oh, no. Be gone, thought away, big gay. Disappear, you queer. Surrender, transgender, and a wild pedophile. Oh, God. There. At least we know the cishets can rhyme. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, at least I know you cishets can Whoa. rhyme. No, can Whoa! You? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> You threw, you threw, like, enough shade on me to turn me into a shadow just then. <laughs> wow. See, if I said something similar to you, that would have been a hate crime. But it's okay for you to say that. Because... Society. It's like how, like, we can't talk about men being sexually assaulted and one being perpetrated. But we did. But, you know. No, we, we don't did. talk about that. Shh. No, but we did. We did Shh. talk about we that. We did talk we about it. We, we don't. Did. We don't. We did. We don't. <laughs> we broke the boundaries. We broke down the wall. I mean, us queers are, you know, constantly trying to get attention and, you know, do crazy stuff and stand out. I'm kind of a walking stereotype right now. <laughs> His glasses are so flashy. Flashiest. <laughs> woo, 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 party, party, wait, wait, wait. Party, woo, flashy glasses. Woo. Talk. That I am. No <laughs> way, big gay. I'm sorry, that one makes me laugh. No way, big gay. <laughs> I'm like, are they talking to a bear? <laughs> Person who is a boy says he identifies as a girl. Me and kicks him in the balls. Person goes down screaming agony. Illusion 100. Yeah, okay. Um, These ones are still, like, like pretty bad, but, you know. I can see the humor in it. Um, but, yeah, it's all based around the fact that it's not... A, a proper like perception of a trans person and the fact that you don't take them and, seriously you and just it's disrespectful pretending and stuff like that. the pretending and all the like you know acting or whatever like i showed you that D one didn't i with the um person's like oh don't invite a trans woman to D because um i said to them it's a double role play 
which you know is like humorous, but it's like that's also pretty horrendous. At the same it's, time, that's like implying that their entire life is them acting, pretending, and that's not. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and and the same case. Same case. One of the gripes I have with the one that I just said, not the one just now, but the one that I read out, the kicking in the balls. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't. They didn't sneak into a bathroom. They didn't sexually assault anyone. But they got kicked in the balls anyways. I've and seen this one recently, yeah. I saw that. Why was that pointless violence? I saw that, I saw that one recently. But no, uh, I kind of relate to this one, though. The doctor, sir, patient, I'm a ma'am. Ma'am, you have testicular cancer. And I'm like, I'm gonna one day get... Actually, I don't have to worry about uterine cancer. Ha <laughs> ha But, uh... <sighs> Too soon. Sir, you have uterus. Like, that, that was probably interesting. Like, sir, we have to, we're gonna remove your uterus. And you know what? That actually put a smile on my face. So, just oh, we, on we, you. We need to share some of the suddenly trans memes, too, because they're pretty funny. <laughs> well, don't worry. I've got some positive ones. Um, oh, you do? Okay. Like I said, I, I, right now I've got only, I'm only doing the antis, but we have cleansing fun ones. When you miss gender and trans, that's why you're me right. Yeah, that's another thing. But yeah, it's just not taking it seriously. That's that's the crux of the, the, that kind of humor. It's just like, oh, yeah. Oh, this just one. trying to know. This one's really kind of fucky. Did you get yourself in that third panel? I've seen all of these recently, actually. It's a scary thing. I, I forget what I was looking at. Um, I had but for these. You have to dig for it. Yeah, that's bad then. That's bad. I must have been like, passively seeing these in other places. And Is it worth bringing up the whole depression stuff and things as well? Or... I think we should leave that out. What do you mean by depression stuff? Your own depression? Well, I mean, I, I, I looked at that last meme, and obviously the way that, at the, hand, the, the third panel in that meme, um, that got me thinking about that Steam game again. You yeah. know, the percentage thing? 42, yeah. 41%. Yeah, but it's just the fact that, I don't know, like, I don't, either I don't... the hatred, the hatred's been normalized, or they don't take it seriously as something that they could, that you could even, like, think about joking about something like that. And, you know? and I actually have another one that goes with the suit, so I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. Right? Oh, yeah. uh, so I don't know if you saw the last meme I posted where it's like, fight bigotry, 98% of straight men are unwilling to date trans women because of hatred. And they're like, well, yeah, well, she's a guy, so. Yeah. It's hard to disassociate, um, physical characteristics with, um, you know, the thing that matters. I, I, I can kind of understand attraction to genitals. Like, I get the preference, mm -hmm. like, not wanting to touch a penis or a vagina. I can kind of understand that. What I don't understand is, like, post-op. And that's just... This is also coming from someone that, you know, is very not someone that would pick and choose based on genitals. Because, you know, there's this fun world of toys that exist. Um, <laughs> but, no. Um, and I understand that a lot of people have this kind of if they can't bear your children thing, or you can't, con they, they can't conceive. No, that's, that's, I don't, and no. I personally think that's just kind of disgusting and wrong, that someone's worth is based on their ability to, to I, I don't, conceive or not. I don't that, that's think the, that's the, that, that can't be the case for most of it. I don't think so. For trans, I don't think so. Um, but there is plenty of stories where someone will walk out on their spouse because they're able to conceive or have children together. And I'm like, we, we have a, options, like adoption, surrogate, all that jazz, and someone's self-worth can really feel determined upon whether or not they can bear their own child or conceive their own children and stuff like that. And it's just, it's sad that people feel such a worth based on that. Sorry, go. No, I don't know. I feel, I'm really conflicted about that one, honestly. I, I, don't, I don't think I've got anything positive to say no. or negative, really. Well, hey, neutral's perfectly fine. It's not like you have to be on one side of the fence. Just be honest is really what this is about. This isn't about being 100%. Oh, there's nothing wrong with trans. You're all no, like bigots or being, you know, other way. It doesn't have to be one way. I, I kind of... Honest. I kind of get both sides of that because, yeah, you know, you love a person. You should, you know, s stay with them through bad stuff and things. And then... And, uh, I don't know. It's really hard because... I kind of see the appeal in, like, you know, having someone 
bear your actual child, you know? Well, not actual child, but, but I mean, like... There's kind of this weird narcissism behind it. It is. No, no, I, and I get that, too. It's just... And I don't know. I, no, that I would never bear my own child or pass on Well, I mean, you genetics. can't. You can't now. Well, now, anyway. well, because I You've made the choice. I've already made that choice. Yeah, I've already made, yeah. That, choice. Yeah, I've mm. made that choice, but... I feel like I should be able to love someone I adopt just as much as someone that I birth. No, it it doesn't. Oh no, it doesn't detract from that. No, no, I get that. Yeah. And I I don't know. I just I don't see the need or point in wanting to have. It's and really it's kind of hypocritical of me to kind of back that point up because you know I, I talked to you about overpopulation and stuff before. Yeah, and that's one of my big points too. Yeah, about that's a big point. Yeah. Not being a pro. And then on top of the fact that there's so many people unfit to be parents that are parents. That are anyway, yeah. Like, I'll yeah. be out in public and I'm like, first of all, a lot of times when children are acting up, it's because the parents, of how the parents taught them. The kids are only as bratty as their parents allow them to be, in most cases. Unless they have some sort of disorder um, or something like that, for the most part, a child is the way they are because... Of the parents so when i see a child acting a certain way my first thought is oh that's a bright child isn't that's a bright child it's my mom would never allow me to get that way never i gotta have i gotta have a safe thought actually yeah that's oh true. right why well, well, i was saying like some people shouldn't parent because i also i also seen the way some parents talk to their children or act uh, their children, yeah. and i'm just yeah, like just me. what I've seen that a lot over That's here. terrible. It's like, why are you swearing at the kids like and all sorts of stuff? Or just, yeah. like, make them feel, like, terrible. Like, just really dehumanize them. And it's just, like... And then, and then you know, my gripes with some of my family members, um, where I don't really agree with them being a good parent. Like, I, most of us didn't think they were ready for the first child and now they're having a second child and we're still like you weren't so you still aren't ready for the first child because not everyone we were overpopulated and on top of that a lot of the people who are overpopulating for one aren't being good parents not all of them not most of them i'm not saying that i don't know the statistics but there's a good amount of people i see on a daily basis that i'm like you're not fit for parenting <laughs> And then on top of that, there's also the people that are even more extreme that where they don't even take care of their child. They give them up for adoption or this or that, something like that. They weren't ready for children and so they're not parenting that child. And now that child's stuck in a system, foster care, adoption, whatever, and they're up for fucking grabs pretty much to life. And they know that. That's the sad thing. That's, that's something that's going to bother them and affect them for a long time. And, and I've heard some Dad. really sad stories about siblings being separated. People, uh, one of my friends, her mother was in this foster care system, and so she ended up being in the foster care system for a while, and her mom wanted to make sure that well, she did not have the same experience as her kind of thing. You know. I want to say there's no, like, exact, perfect, right, absolutely right, must always be this way, way of parenting. Every child, every person, every... Mm. There's different circumstances every time. Every situation is different. But there mm. is wrong ways parenting mm -hmm. for sure without a doubt oh yeah for definitely yeah using derogatory dehumanizing tones of voice and things of your children and i'm getting way off topic of everything but <laughs> you get my point though about the whole my my kind of my viewpoints on like with birthing and stuff like that when not everyone was meant to <laughs> everyone almost almost everyone can do it not everyone should <laughs> so with post-op what were you saying that you think, for the most part, it is with people not being okay with post-op trans? No, I was saying because the same way the you know your gender and stuff, it's 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 a metaphysical thing. It's not it's not a physical. It's not part of, of your body. It's part of who you are, kind of thing. The same way, it's the same perception held by the people who who kind of behave that way, in that they will always see you as the physical embodiment of what you were when you were born even if they have never seen you as that even if it's this is just, you, you brought home a girl and you had sex with her she had a vagina and everything and then you find out but that's the point it's like you find out oh yeah they were they were born as something else then then some people would think oh they've always been that you know they don't look at the mental part of it they don't look at the you know the the anything beyond the physical flesh the the, the parts that you had when you came into the world you know 
that's where that viewpoint comes from. That's because it's the simplest form of that, because you don't think about the metaphysical parts. It's just, oh, you were born with a dick. That means that you're a guy, you know? But, you've never but it's that... It. She fought she fooled you enough that you didn't realise until she told you. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the thing. It's not a fool thing. But that's it's the way they, they feel fooled. That's, that's the way they feel. They feel like they've, they've been... Yeah, they, they feel like they've been... They've been um, Hence why there's 42, 40 something states that whatever. will allow you the trans panic yeah, rule, yeah. where you're allowed yeah, yeah. to get a plea to get away with murder because they're trans and you, they're, you're straight and just... Well, that's, that's the thing you can't. Scary place. You, 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 like, there's no way in hell that anyone should have to go out and say, "Oh yeah, I'm trans. I, I, I was born as this." You know, beforehand, because because it's not. It's like you, you you're a guy. You feel like you're a guy. You're a guy. You know. I do understand before sex and maybe early in dating if things are getting serious to be like, or even at the beginning of dating, I do understand that because that's also very telling for you as a trans person if this partner's going to be right for you based on their reaction. Being like, if you can't accept me as I am, it's good that I'll get this over with sooner than later. You know. Um, I'm asked to, no, that, that that's yeah. Because obviously, but, if but, I told but, you but, I was but, trans, and then you'd be like, "Oh, you're still a girl to me," or something like that. Then I'd be like, "Hit the road, Jack." I mean, I know it came on to you still, but the point being that if I knew you were transphobic, or that you wouldn't, you know, really see me past what I was born with, then I would be like, "Okay, no, not." Not you're not investing any time in you. You're not worth it. That's true, but people, people again. I don't think they should have to, have to do that. They shouldn't have to do that. No, that's I not some, that's not a requirement. But I I, I kind of see where you're coming from there. But I don't think that they should be obligated I to do that anyway. Completely agree. And I remember a point you made where you because you're you're very you're very like you're very confident about these things. You're very you know upfront and honest about your stuff. Not, uh, I'm not, not saying it's. Not in the workplace. I almost okay. never disclosed once at my last job that I was trans. It was just assumed. I said honest. Okay, I didn't mean honest. I meant I meant. Um, Why well, I'm honest? I'm not, it's not like I'm being dishonest. I'm just not sharing information. No, I mean, they don't need to know. people are people are different, and it's like people are probably very sensitive about the fact that they are trans, and they shouldn't have to be vulnerable and 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 show it if they don't want to. You know, they shouldn't have to be forced to be outed. No. No, they shouldn't be forced to be out. So um, you, you were going to say something. I cut you off. Sorry. Well, I was going to say something about like one of my girlfriends when we first talked on a dating app. One of the very first things she says to me is like, "Just so you know, I am trans." She even mm. has this in her profile. She even has pictures of her in like her underwear in front of a mirror, and I'm like, "I don't care. I, I kind of associate being trans myself." <laughs> well, my like, mm. thanks for being honest with me, but doesn't change anything. But that's because she's had it in the past. Well, also, people tend not to always look at everything on the dating profile. Um, they start talking to you, thinking that you're attractive, not actually looking at your profile, and they look at your profile, and like, oh. And she's also had it before where people, like, see that she's trans, talk to her, like, are you post or pre-op? Actually, she's had someone ask her MTF or FTM. <laughs> and, like, Jesus. all of her pictures are feminine, so assume she's probably transitioning to female. That or these are old pictures, and I don't know why she'd use old pictures. But no. Um, but once they, uh, usually the people who are asking if they're pre-op or post-op are usually chasers because they're kind of hoping you're gonna say pre-op. Usually, but um, Ch can you clarify what that term is, please? Chasers usually, usually cis men. They can be female too. I sent you a comic once of a female chaser to a trans mask person, and they usually are targeting pre-op trans woman. And they, they chase after pre-op trans women, usually. So it's like um, a fetish or something. It's, yeah, it's pretty much fetishizing being trans. Um, and it's, like I said, it's usually cis men to trans women, pre-op trans women. Mm -hmm. But it can go any direction with it being a female chaser or a trans mask chaser. Um, and a good amount, some chasers are partly like they are question their sexuality and so they want to do it with a trans woman because that kind of it's like yeah gender. it's like oh it's, it's less gay or something like yeah, that yeah makes it, i get to see if i'm gay by sleeping with someone that's right, technically a right. woman you know oh. <laughs> and it's just like you're contradicting yourself my dude just just buy a toy and test it out there if you like anal <laughs> you don't need to get someone else involved and emotionally drained to test out 
what you like and where you like. But yeah, she's had it before. She will really. She one time was really hitting it off with this one person. I think she was lesbian, and they still actually sometimes chit chat. But she was like, "Yeah, so I, I can't do the trans thing." Like, but they were like super hitting it off. They were do, going, you know. But she's like, "But you, you know, you were born male. You have a penis, and it's just kind of like you guys clicked very well." But okay, I guess you gotta respect that. I get it. I get it. But at the same time, I don't get it. I get, I get respecting. I get respecting boundaries. I get respecting, you know, some genitalia really turns you away, etc. At the same time, I'm the kind of person that I've seen both my partners pre-op. When a partner is still technically pre-op. Never once have I seen them as anything but a woman. Never. And, and, and I'm also someone who always had a preference for females or feminine especially afab females um it do you understand like where, where it comes from with the, with the physical thing though but I mean, no, i'm saying as someone who used to identify as lesbian okay and yet yeah. and yet here i am with all four of my partners being amab only mm. one of them just recently got bottom surgery so it's just i don't understand the genital preference almost so I'm like I love someone because I love them that could also come from my kind of being somewhere on the ace space somewhere in the asexual spectrum too where sex is not this end all factor for me mm-hmm. so I I get what? it but I don't get it <laughs> Yeah, people have much baser interests than, than that I guess because I, I know sex isn't like yeah you said it's not a deal break it's not essential really i guess but it is for it's, a lot of people it really is yeah so see it is like, like it's like a big part of their lives kind of thing so um of course something as simple something with such a someone with a, such a simple desire would have simple tastes so when they see you know a dick on someone they're like oh that's a guy you know it's because it's simple well, to them it's just black and white that they one time had a dick um, I remember yeah, seeing exactly. one thing where they're like, what do trans women vaginas have that, you know, cis woman vaginas don't have? And they're like, uh, natural mucosa or natural lubrication or something like that. Or vaginal mucus, that's what it was. And it's like, but they can have vaginal mucus. Mm-hmm, not even yeah. every cis vagina has vaginal mucus. Here's a meme that as a trans mask person... Oh, God, no. If you're looking for sensitivity, you're not going to get it with a pepe. No way. Not like activity, <laughs> this is this is no, this is 4chan as well. The people on 4chan are absolute anarchists. The the horrible. But just found a loophole in the systems, lads. Be me. Oh, sorry, I just did a thing. There we go. Be me. Want steroids for quick gains? Live in small town, so I can't get them easily. Hear about female to male hormone treatment. Basically, pure testosterone and a pill. Gonna stop you right there. Almost no, <laughs> no. Trans ma- it's not FDA approved the pill version of testosterone for trans masculizing hormones at least not in America there is no pill for testosterone for trans mask people but okay continue um basically pure testosterone pill idea.jpg order a few months supply yeah I'm trans all right male to alpha male but uh, you make it sound so damn easy <laughs> Well, no, because they just, they just... Also, order a few months' supply. Like, what do you think this is that you just get from the pharmacy? Just, like, willy-nilly? You have to go... <sighs> Clearly I, not educated. I mean, there's, there's, I, I don't want to be this guy. There's just no point analyzing these people, because these people just, just... No, I know, oh. but let me teach a lesson to people on especially trans mask hormones. It is a lot easier to get trans femme hormones, whether you're getting it from an actual doctor, pharmacy, or if you're getting it from the market, um, then it is trans mass hormones. Yes, it is pure steroids, technically. Yes, as I will confirm that. There's no pill for it, though, for trans mass hormones. But it is way expensive, and, or at least for getting off the market. It's also pretty pricey, too, from, you know, pharmacies and stuff. And it is a controlled substance. You have yeah, like you said, diagnosed. You have you, yeah, if if I were to give a controlled substance, would you? Say? If you share it out, yeah. If I if I gave if I shared it, 
with someone who doesn't have a prescription. Oh, if I, actually, if I shared it, period, I could go to prison for that, for any controlled substance, whether it be my ADHD medication or my steroids. Um, There's the whole culture about oh. calling um, MTF as well, traps and stuff. That's not cool either. That's a little bit like, ooh. Because then that implies, again, a deception aspect. You've been fooled. It's also Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, you've been bamboozled. And going back to misogyny here. It's also implying that females exist for sexual gratification for men. But they are this trap for sex. Yeah, because it's like, yeah, you lure the men. So that, yeah. many bad connotations behind the word trap. Yes. So it's many. Them, yeah. Many layers. And that's like, it's this whole thing about how toxic masculinity and misogyny are the main foundations for homophobia and transphobia, aside mm -hmm. from the fear of the unknown. And it's also one of the main reasons why it's AMABs that are mainly. Well, yeah, they, they got that's, that's, that's both things then. You got, you, got, you got the fear of the unknown, and you have societal enculturement, societal conditioning. It's both of those things. Uh, we are the problem. This this kind of goes with the whole like letting trans women participate in women's sports and stuff like that. Um, so just going off topic a bit here, but this is probably the most focused I've been at this time of night. <laughs> Fair. Like, I feel like I'm gonna, if I'm going to collapse, but at the same time, I feel like I want to talk about this stuff. Um, and then this is. I'm gonna laugh actually if that's actually a picture of a real trans person. So it's like what trans people think they look like. When it's like that literally is a trans person and what they look like. Most cyclists do that. Basically, so it's likely a will. Oh, you just saw that one. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, the but yeah, about it's, it's just it's it exaggerated women. stuff. Yeah, again. And then what trans people think they look like versus what they actually look like. I'm like, if that's actually a trans woman, then that's actually what she looks like. You're kind of defeating the point of your own joke. Unless that's actually a cis woman, but I, I don't know. I feel like I've seen I, it before. I don't know. And then, so this one I actually I made reference to earlier about the whole suicide jokes. Hello, Luna. Where they're basically condoning the idea of letting transgender people kill themselves. We're halfway there. We're halfway getting rid of the transgender people because half of them kill themselves. Whoa! We're halfway I saw, there. I, I, saw, um, I saw a few of those memes before. I didn't want to share them, though, because it gets pretty dark, you know. I know a lot of these have been coming trans now. But you should, you, should, you should talk about it. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't talk about it. It's just I was like, mm, probably not the best time. Um, you know that a relationship between a man and a woman is how I got here? Well, technically, actually, you could have gotten here from oxidized dissemination, from sur uh, being a surrogate, blah, blah, blah. So, technically, that might not have been how you got here. So this one actually was also submitted to me by the same person who submitted the two videos in the beginning. Because the transgender is to confuse children. That is our purpose in life. We want to confuse children. We want to make them question everything. Children already question everything. What am I talking about? What's this? Why is this? Will they always be a boy? Will they always be a girl? What's that? What's this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Children question everything already, so... <laughs> the thing, I actually was making reference to something from A Sign Life of Gender where there was a scene, or a scene, there was a true story account where a child had asked what gender the baby was, and then they asked if the baby will always be that gender. And the mom was like, oh, of course, you know. Of course there'll always be a baby boy, or there'll always be a boy. Okay, so Star Wars had to get involved. Oh, boy. Oh boy. This boy was raised by two men. 32 years later, he blew up the planet. Still think it's okay for gay couples to adopt. Um, okay. Technically, he was raised by one, because one of them died pretty early. Uh, spoiler alert! No kidding. I mean, he wasn't raised by two men. Wait, hang on. He was raised tenderly by. Actually, he wasn't tenderly raised by, like, all the Jedi. Yeah, because yeah, it was like a it was communal. It was, it was it basically was an orphanage. It was raised by a bunch of men. It was an orphanage. Well, I wouldn't say orphanage, but well, not an orphanage, but like they they took all the the children. I mean, the Jedi are pretty dickish anyway. Like like if you want to go into that as well, they basically kidnap children and brainwash them into not having feelings and stuff, and then also get really upset when they decide to have feelings and stuff so no oh, i don't know 
We're breaking this down. <laughs> We're breaking down Star Wars in Queer Nation. See, okay. I, I know South Park isn't exactly the most, um, you know, what's the word? Uh, oh. Politically correct show or whatever. The, the, I, I kind of liked what they did with the Caitlyn Jenner thing because they didn't I have not actually. Seen that, okay. But... Oh, basically, they didn't. I don't think they were exactly mocking her for being a transgender person, but they did mock her for the fact that she killed someone. Um, but again, that could just be an avenue towards attacking a transgender person. So, so I well, they actually did recently do a thing where they did attack the whole sports thing. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh boy. Yeah. Um, so they did. They did actually attack transgender recently. And if it help, if it makes you feel any better, I did actually go through and watch a few of those. Um, a few weeks ago, or a few well, like last month or something, and I felt more uncomfortable looking at the transgender stuff because I guess I'm more aware about it now than I was. You know, last year, I guess, this time last year. Um, um which is good, I guess, because I learned. I kind of like um, we were watching ghost stories, and I was like, oh, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of tranny jokes here. Because he's that word and stuff. Um, but they, mm. they meant more of transvestite than transgender. For the, They did actually make a trans, tran, transgender joke, too. But. Oh, they kept, like, laughing at the, the ghost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, so I realized, actually, the one I just sent you. Um, I actually I realized I didn't grab the one that I saw that had so they changed it even if it means cutting off your dick is what they changed it to instead of losing something. There was there was a Caitlyn Jenner joke that I. I tried avoiding too much Caitlyn Jenner. That's the only one I grabbed. Was Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, what do you think of Caitlyn Jenner as like an advocate for trans people? Then no comment. You don't, you don't want to talk about that. Okay, honestly, that's fine. I, I don't know nearly enough about her. I really don't, and there's also the whole thing about killing someone, so no comment. I don't know that much about Laverne Cox either, I just know that, that whole little tidbit about how she's very particular about what she talks about when she talks about it and stuff like that, and I appreciate that, I respect that, um, that she, she calls people on that too, like where she's like, this is not about that, this is about other things. And if you're not gay, the case, I said gay. Out of interest, do you think this is transphobic? Let me see what you got. Well, I'm not 100% cool with dead naming, even if it's just to be like, because everyone knows who Caitlyn Jenner is. Oh, the, yeah, the dead name thing. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I, I didn't um, look at it that way, actually. I was just kind of like... I mean, it's bad, but it's not... Hmm. I, I don't know. It's... it's. I'm not wanting to... Like, if, if I want to break it out as negative, I could say... Assuming... If they're saying changes in just the physical changes. Because technically, if you're transgender, you've always been transgender. The only thing that's changed mm. is your deciding to transition whether it be socially medically etc uh, it's the same as being like allergic to peanuts or something like that you might have always been allergic to peanuts but you didn't know until you tried a peanut um something along those lines kind of thing so if they mean like changed as in like completely changed their gender or just transitioned physically and stuff like that so, like I said, I'm not really wanting to, like, try to break it down as being transphobic. I don't appreciate the dead naming, even though we all know who Caitlyn Jenner is. We all know Caitlyn Jenner was someone else. Does it mean we have to dead name her? I mean, technically, Caitlyn Jenner was always Caitlyn Jenner, right? Yeah, is my point. That's a name so, she doesn't was never, want to associate with. was never two different people, but well, yeah. yeah. they're the same person. But we, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a name she doesn't want to associate with. It's not her name anymore. Just like because yeah, that name's associated with, um, I guess, who she was pretending to be or whatever. Well, it's or... the name that was given to her. That she... Yeah, yeah, exactly. This, this is such a Republican like post. Look, she's holding a goddamn gun. It literally gun. says Douglas <laughs> County, well. County Republican. Yeah, yeah that's what the first thing I saw. Yeah, yeah. Also, I could totally see her bra. Also, I've seen trans women that look just like that. Maybe not the gun. I'm also very concerned that she has a gun. Um, why is she hunt? If she's hunting, 
what the heck is she wearing? Yeah, that was my second question, honestly. It's mostly fitted now, but my sticker said, let boys be feminine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not feminine. I'm disassociating myself from femininity. You don't have There's nothing to. feminine about me. Here's the thing. <laughs> About the sticker. This isn't directed towards you, this is directed in general because people are like, don't force femininity. It's not forcing anything. <laughs> it's saying, let them. It's not saying you have to be. It's not saying you should be. It's saying, let them be. If they I mean, honestly, that, the, 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 like, the, they shouldn't really. Sorry, try that one more time. It kind of got robot -y. Oh, you're actually frozen. I'm going to give that a moment. I'm alone, no one beside me. Okay, there you are. Hello, how you doing? Uh, try that again. What was this saying? Something about femininity. No, this is saying, um... <laughs> uh, I was just saying that, um... Yeah. Ultimately, you want to have a good, you know, society kind of thing. Worrying about aspects of masculinity or femininity bringing you down kind of thing. Taking that worry away would just make things so much easier, so I feel. And you don't worry about being perceived to be something else, like, derogatively. Yeah. So you know how, like, most... You can just do... That's pretty much done. You know how, like, most, like, clubs have, like, a sort of, like, teacher, advisor, stuff like that, supervisor? Mm-hmm. Well, the teacher supervisor for the Pride Center at my... Most recent college, um, he he one time said something that I totally agree with that the fight, the the fight that LGBT people are doing isn't just for us. It's not just for LGBT people. It's for everyone because when we allow mm -hmm. that femininity to be accepted, be it for trans women or gay men or whatever you want to say, it also leaves this big pressure on cis men to not have to conform yeah. to toxic masculinity to be able to be in touch with their emotions, to be able to express themselves and not have to hide behind this. And, and also, that also relieves a lot of pressure on females, too, because then it lowers chances of aggression and assault and so that. And yes, it's making me sound like saying only males are the aggressors and female the victims. We already know I'm, I don't see that. I know that's not the case. But it does lessen that to allow men to be that way. Okay, here real quick. We're gonna do the gendered, pointlessly gendered items. All right, we'll do this, and then I'll probably go to bed. Yeah, yeah. and then I can fill you some positivity first before you go off. So twenty-five pointlessly gendered products that either make you laugh or cry. Protein. That's going to happen to me because I brought the regular protein, not the women's protein. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These baby bibs always a princess born to be king. Best to teach girls from the start not to aim too high. Ooh. Yeah, because you, know, you always want to be a princess. They never say queen or anything like that. Kids' nurses' uniforms. Also. Oh, no, no, don't be. Why, why, why are they gendering pink lady apples? I love pink lady apples. There's nothing wrong with, with being. And it's a pink lady apples. Yeah, and you really like to make you know, pink colored ladies on them and stuff. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just the same thing on the box it's just one of those pink and, and, and they are more expensive look at 25 tablets for 9.99 and 30 tablets for 39.99 30 for the non-gendered one okay but, i'm not gonna lie i kind of like that lunch bag oh i didn't see the lunch bag yet oh sorry yeah i, I like it too it doesn't have to be specifically just for men no that's, that's definitely a unisex thing like even if you're going by color scheme alone that's still like a unisex thing. Tools. Women's hand tools. <laughs> and they're all pink. Loose are purple, or purple. In this case. Oh, the purple. Yeah. Wow, what a change. Not the pink tax. Basketball. You're going to make it to your girl. There's some really weird people basketball. who are into purple. Basketball. Yeah. You get to get your, your little girl pink basketball. Hairbrushes and nail clips. Also, also, with the hairbrushes and nail clips, the price again. The price again is. More expensive for the pink stuff. It's the same exact thing, just pink. The pink tax, man. Oh, it is. That's true. Like the tablets were also different priced, um, or same price for different quantities, and the female one, of course, is more expensive. 
The skeleton PJs at sea. Yeah, okay, they're the same price at least. To be fair, I feel like the pink skeleton PJs would be more anatomically correct because it's the, like the muscles around your bones. You depraved fuck. Oh, sorry. I mean, you, you ah, depraved, you depraved. I'm keeping that in. <laughs> you depraved uh, man. Mm. Oh, also, funny enough, we actually do have the men's Q-tips in this house. Um, but yeah, so apparently there's manly Q-tips. Q-tips. Masculized Q-tips, all as men's ultimate multi-tool. Oh, the cotton things. Okay, gotcha. Oh, that's right. Um, cultural differences and whatnot. Cosmetic stuff isn't a manly thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It makes me feel more manly about buying. Uh, Which pisses me off because I go and find a decent comb. Snacks, especially troubling since little girls are made of sugar and spice. Only for put. Oh, I haven't. I, I love pombers, but I've not seen this actually. This is back in 2014 as well. It's pretty recently. But have you noticed as well with the trend here and the fact that at least most of the time they don't specify that it's a man's? Oh, like the, the yeah, specify the man one. Yeah, because male's the default. Because this this is the no yeah, it's the, yeah, which is from men's rib. Women are a new species, and then yeah. binoculars has to be girly girl binoculars. And tough chicks. Wear gloves. I hate everything about that picture. <laughs> Are you talking about the tough chicks works gloves? One? White now, men. Oh, that's like uh, accidental what? racism or something. Yeah. White yeah. now. Man wipes. Dude wipes are a lifestyle for those who want to do more. Dominate the day and live like a boss. Do I get my concession now? No. It's just, yeah, it's like very aggressive kind of, you know, forceful language as well. It's just like, I'm a man, I'm going to get things done. Yeah, like you know. the, like, and in the sign of gender, we actually talked about that in parenting, about how, you know, there's normal baby bags, and then there's men baby bags, and almost all the men ones are impractical. They're for small, it's like, temporary use, not it's, for, yeah, like, it's like, all the time. So they, they, they ex if you want to get one that's for permanent use, you usually have to get a lot more of a feminine-looking ones, because the default ones are usually pretty feminine. Um, and because they don't expect men to be the primary caregiver, they don't expect men to always be the one taking care of the children <laughs> because they're not it's supposed to. The primary caregiver. Primary caregiver. No, yeah, you did, it's funny that you said that because I, I wrote an essay about um, child language speech the other week, and I was literally just stating that the whole time throughout about primary caregivers. I didn't gender the caregiver. I was just like, yeah. Well, and know, also, it, it I feel like it's one. fair to say that, you know, don't have to say parent because <clears throat> some people were parented or your caregivers were their grandparents or their aunts or uncles or, you know, someone that wasn't technically a parent to them. They, they weren't technically their parent, but they did, they were their caregiver kind of thing. So I think that's also fair. Like, I use Kicker not just for gender neutral neutrality, but also for neutrality of whoever is taking care of this child, kind of thing. But, yes, I appreciate mm. that you use caregiver, too. And then if No, they're because they're more, they're more gender. But, again, this other thing I just noticed with the glue as well. In both cases, whenever they emphasize man or lady or girl or whatever, it seems like they're trying to validate the usage of the item and the fact that it's not expected for them to use it in the first place. Yes. Yes, I was actually going to say like, something like that. Like, it's like an case, encouragement like, thing. Yeah. Like, especially with a default where there's a normal one and then there's the gender mm -hmm. one, it's usually because of that. Like With, with like uh, cosmetic supplies, they had to have men tools. Or men like cosmetic supplies. I, I'm kind of getting like an actual... I'm getting like a condescending vibe as well, honestly. It's just like, oh, you can take this too if you want to, you know? Yeah, like, kind look, this encourages like, you oh, to... like, oh, society yeah. doesn't expect you to, but you can if you want to. Yeah, we, we made it panty and pink for you to do it. Or purple, I guess. Um, and they charge them more, which, again, kind of makes me think that it's not a thing that they should get. It's kind of a thing that they're just trying out or whatever. And they because they don't believe... only charge more to the female ones. Because that's where yeah, the exactly, yeah. pink tax comes from. Men's bread? What? Yeah, what yeah. Was... When was bread a goddamn... I, did, did, I just love did, the did, comments, did... just why? Yeah. No, I think bread should have been the top one there. Well, I mean, I don't think it's like an organized list, but yeah. I'm just so confused about the bread now. The bread one bothers me, like, a lot. Like, well, do everything not else, there's like a shred of me that's like, mm, I guess you can justify that. But bread! Last or like the... 
Well, the shooting things. Okay. Which one was that one gendered to? It was gendered towards females. They had normal laxatives and normal females. laxatives. Because, because, okay, newsflash, I don't think you noticed, but, you know, girls, they don't fart, they don't go they to don't the toilet fart, or anything. They don't fart. No. They don't fart and they don't poop. No. No, they, they don't. don't exactly. That's why. And that's how that's I why knew that I there. wasn't a girl because I farted and pooped yeah. all the time. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that one's uh, the case as well. I can I can like come up with a really like bullshit answer for all of those also, things, honestly. But it's exactly what they. It's exactly what they were thinking of. Um, let me send you some po uh, some positive memes. Um, I think you might get a laugh at some of them at least. Yeah. I don't know, it seems kind of gay to me. What, what is this meme with, with with the person in the pink outfit? I don't get like it's he's, he's, he keeps popping up everywhere. <laughs> I can't recall the context, so I have to look it up. Tony Perkins, seems leader of an anti-LGBT hate group who claimed that God used natural disasters as hurricanes and flooding, such as hurricane flames, to punish homosexuals and their supporters, had his hope, own pardon me home destroyed by a flood. I know, seems pretty gay to me. And then this was the one I was referencing earlier with the facial expression. Hmm. Do you have any acting experience? Yeah, I acted like I was straight for 18 years. <laughs> My mom's a lesbian? Which one? Uh, I love this one. God says homosexuality is in. Off <laughs> with the S. Yeah. Oh, so this one kind of makes me think of like what we're talking about a lot with the anti thing where cis society treats people having a backbone is anything but all. Is this destroying my oh, I, I, speech? I said. Okay, so this might be one of the last ones. This is kind of us talking about with the whole. Um, so who do you think who would they think that is being kicked out of the bathrooms versus who's actually being put into the ladies rooms and that's a trans man in that top corner the one that's being put into the ladies room um and then that's trans girl in the second on uh, the second row hmm. okay so this would be the last one here yeah i like i like how they Okay, that's another like thing that they kind of skirted around there, and the fact that it's not the fact that people are raping people that's the problem. It's the fact that the trans and going in there, and with the potential for it, it's not like they're trying to go out and stop the people perpetrating that kind of crime. It's just they assuming that they're going to do the crime because they're in. The <sighs> yeah. Anyway. So this is something I should do one day. Yeah, yeah. I saw. I saw this. Support yeah, gay this marriage life status. Yeah. What's so bad about gays? No, nothing. I support gay marriage. I'm unfriending everyone who likes this post. That's the point. Actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. Okie dokie. So we've had. I don't know how much we're gonna keep. I don't know how many. I don't know if it's gonna be split into parts. If this is too <laughs> long, but there's some really good points I want to keep. So. Thank you very much, Capybara, for joining me for this. Um, no play, provided and, something positive. And I, I do love the point you made about how a year ago some jokes made you laugh as opposed to now where it's like, oh. Um, and that's part of the reason I guess I don't usually laugh at race humor and stuff because I'm like, I don't really find it cool. But that's mm. me. Thank you, Capybara for joining me i really appreciate and i hope this has been insightful i'm glad that we were able to have a conversation that's what's nice about having two people do these kind of reaction things is having that conversation especially when they're coming from two different backgrounds and that's kind of what i wanted i wanted a conversation not just me rambling but having that conversation which is nice uh, and then we also both get to point out things that the other one might not have saw seen or whatnot or thought of and so that's nice so I appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you so very much. And I hope y'all have a great time. And I hope you maybe enjoyed or resonated or something with what we had to say. Maybe thought a bit about it. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You th th thought a bit on it. Thank you all. And I hope you all have a gay day.